back at Independence Stadium. We're about ready to go. The Tigers are on the field, ready to receive the football. Oregon State around the coaches across the way. They're not quite ready to go and not out there as yet, but they will be very shortly. Crowd, about 20,000 tonight. We had heard earlier they're probably 35 or somewhere in that range, but they say, no, those were not correct estimates. They thought about 20,000, and that's about what we have. Uh, as Eddie Robinson goes for his record-tying win and goes against Oregon State. Incidentally, in this stadium, and Grambling has their own stadium on their campus. They do not play a lot of games here, but over the past, I believe it's five years, they've played six times here. They've won five of those six, and the one they lost was to SMU, like 20 to 14, and at that time, SMU was very highly rated in the country, so the Tigers can play on this natural grass stadium. Okay, to call a play-by-play, we're ready to go. Here's Daryl. Okay, thanks, Jim. <laughs> Twin safety back for Grambling will be Clyde Dyson, who's their starting fullback, and Kelvin Devereaux, a backup running back. Jim Nielsen ready to kick it off right to left, and we're underway. Saturday night in the south, and football. The kick comes to Dyson at the four. Five straight ahead, 10, 15, slants outside, hit at the 20, and tripped down at the 23-yard line. As the Beavers got pretty good downfield coverage, Craig Galloway makes the tackle on the special teams for Oregon State, tripping up Dyson at the 23. They're going to mark it back at the 22 and that's where Grambling will go on offense first and ten. The Beavers up front with Mingo and Haggerty, Alfieri and Klein. The linebackers Lewis, Schneider and Parker. The secondary of Northington, Monson, Lopez and Odegaard. And we'll set Grambling for you. As we have time, they'll come out on a wingback formation. Marvin Thomas is the wingback set to the right. Go with two tight ends to start the game. Split running backs behind. They give it a Dyson on a straight hitter. Broke up at 25. Gets out to the 29 where Lopez meets him and drills him down at the 30, but it's a gain of eight. Between left tackle and left guard, well blocked by Grambling, and Lopez from the secondary forced to finally come up and make the tackle. Second down and two for Grambling. Okay, offensively, Grambling, not real fancy. Don't do a lot of things. They do use a wing, which we don't see that much anymore, but they use the wing. They'll also use the uh, double tight ends, and they'll use a double wing sometimes, so we'll see some people in strange formations tonight. Thomas is the wing to the right now and goes in motion back to the left. They give it a dice it again. He, he's hit in the hole at the 30-yard line and piled backwards. Bob Klein hit him first and then Jeff Schneider, the middle linebacker, helps out. The game will be maybe one. They'll give him one to the 31 and it'll be third down and one for Grambling at that point. And Oregon State tonight having to use almost a six-man front or a seven-man front because of that wing position we talked about forces you to bring an extra man up and put him on the line of scrimmage. That's all well and good to keep pressure on him, but don't let him get away from you on a passing game because that'll open something up deep. Again, the double tight end set. The two tight ends are Robert Williams and Kevin Roy. And again, now they'll go to a double wing back set, bring Thomas back in motion to the formation, pitch the ball to Dyson, hit in the backfield and drill down at the 31, and I don't believe he made it. 31-yard line, down he goes. LeVance Northington made a very good play coming up from corner for Oregon State to knock down Dyson. It's no gain at the 31. Phil Alfieri penetrated, made contact in the backfield, and then Northington makes the tackle, and Grambling will have to punt the football. So good job by Oregon State's defense first time around tonight. Robert Williams will punt it. He's kicked 11 times, 30.9 average only, and his longest 43. For Oregon State, Robert Adams will stand back inside his own 30-yard line. Four returns for 31 yards and a 6.2 average. Williams back at the 16. Good snap, no rush, and here's the kick. It'll be short. Williams or Adams comes up to grab it at the 33, trying to get outside, reverses to the 30, and he's tackled back at the 29. He'll lose four on the play. And downfield quickly for Grambling to make the tackle was Tony Griffin, an offensive guard who got down there in a hurry, and Oregon State will go on offense at the 29. Jim, the Beaver set the wall to the far side of the field, and Adams just could not reach his blockers. Couldn't get to it. Great hang time for the punt. He had the ball in the air a long time, so by the time Adams got the football, Grambling had their coverage in position, able to get to him, and he just simply couldn't get to the outside. As we get time tonight, uh, we'll have Jim review all the scores for you of earlier games today and also update night games, so if you miss some scores, hang with us, and we'll get them to you. Beavers will line up in a almost a double slot formation. Wilhelm to throw on first down with time. Floats the ball out near side. It's high. It's deflected. It's incomplete. It was almost intercepted. The pass was high, first of all, to... Uh, Adams out on the near side. Had Adams and Montagna in the same area, and then Bynum going deep. Pass off the receiver's hands, and then almost uh, intercepted by a grambling uh, defensive back. Good rush by Brendel Hopkins and James Polk on the left side of that grambling line up front. Hopkins is 6'5", 225, and Polk's the guy we talked about on the pregame, 6'11", and 340. Daryl Lonnie, Jim Howe, our statistician Hal Cowan, sending it your way from Independence Stadium. This is the home of the Independence Bowl. 
in Shreveport, Louisiana. From the far side, hash mark, second down and 10 at the 29-yard line. Bynum lines up in the backfield, comes in motion back to the near side. They fake the draw to Malone. Back to pass, Wilhelm throws to Bynum, caught, and he's drilled backwards, but the gain will be out near the 35. They'll give him yardage to the 34. Completion for five yards. Reggie's first catch of the ninth, 29th catch of the season. He's tied for third in the NCAA in scoring, and he's second in receiving. Good blocking that job that time by the center, Jack Lester, who dropped back, had to pick up an oncoming lineman. He had to pick up Polk, James Polk. Jack Lester, 6'3", 246, outweighed almost 100 pounds wow. at that time. We're just underway. No score. Beavers' first possession as they face a third down and five at their own 34. Ball just in from the near side hash mark now with sideline left, running room right. Here's a double fake. They give it a bind on a reverse. Coming back to the near side. Got one block but needs another and won't get it. And he struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage at the 34. And there's where the speed of Grambling showed, Jim, as they really got over to the football in a hurry. Robert Goins from strong safety. Leonard Griffin, defensive right end, make the tackle on Bynum on the reverse. No gain, fourth and five. Yeah, you really called it, Earl, with the speed. Griffin at 6'5 uh, and 240, a senior, did a great job from his defensive end position. Got out there contained. Uh, Bynum had to cut inside and put him right in the arms of another Grambling Tiger. Grambling will uh, go back with uh, twin safety now. It'll be uh, Devereaux for one, and the other is great Kevin Desette. Excellent punt by Stempek back to the near side. Return from the 20 out to the 25, struggling out to the 28 or 29-yard line, and that'll be it. Again, good downfield coverage by the Beavers on the play. Mike Matthews, one of them on the tackle. The return was by Calvin Nicholas for Grambling to the 28-yard line. It's marked, and it'll be first down and 10 at that point for the Grambling Tigers. Paul Saunders also downfield of the special teams on the tackle for the Beavers. First and 10, Grambling, their second possession at their own 20 sideline right and running room left as they move left to right 11 48 opening quarter no score Marvin Thomas is the wing back to the right. Again, the double tight ends. That's Roy and Williams. Here comes the uh, counter draw play to Wayne Hill. Gets off two tackles. Then Odegaard gets him and throws him down hard at the 31 after a gain of two. Good play by the freshman from Kennewick. Don Odegaard, second down and eight. Oregon State so far doing a good job defensively handling the wing situation and containing the running game of the Tigers. The thing that they have to worry about, as we men mentioned, is overcommitting, getting too many people up and being burned badly on a deep pass. And we've not seen Grambling go to the air. I wouldn't be surprised if it's about time for him. Dyson and Wayne Hill, the running backs. Marvin Thomas in a wing to the right. Roy tight end to the left. Robert Williams tight end to the right. Landry looking back at his running back. Sends Thomas in motion. Fakes to him and he'll throw his first pass with time. Drills it over the middle. Got a man. It's caught out of the 45 for a first down. And out to the 50 yard line comes Chris Hill the split end and a first down. Finally, Oregon State Scott Monson, along with Mike Lopez, get him at the 50-yard line, but Grambling picks up its first first down of the night. Chris Hill, junior wide receiver from Los Angeles, a junior college transfer, makes the catch. That's his sixth reception of the season for the Tigers, and their first down right at midfield with 10.55 left opening quarter. And Landry showed us that time he can really wing the ball. An excellent pass over the middle. Oregon State not able to break it up. Through a line drive in... Right between a couple of Beaver players who are in zone coverage. They give it second man Hill. He's met in the hole and dropped hard at the 48-yard line. Beaver's doing a good job up front initially. Contact made by Bob Klein. And then down at the bottom of the stack is Gino Mingo and the strong safety, Mike Lopez, and middle linebacker Jeff Schneider. A host of white shirts around the ball carrier. Hill, gain of two to the 48, second and eight. And I think we're going to see Grambling start using some, some play action stuff because of the commitment by Oregon State against the wing. So you're going to start seeing him, I think, roll to either side and try to throw the football down the field. Odegaard and Northington in the corners. Here's the play. Landry rolling back to the right to pass. Winds up. Guns it. Almost intercepted by Lopez, who came storming up from his strong safety position. And Michael almost got there for the intercept. Knocks it down. Incomplete. Again, good coverage in the secondary by the Beavers. And it'll be third and eight. Good play by the Beavers. As Darrell said, Lopez came up to break it up. Again, that time, the quarterback Landry takes the ball, rolls to the near side, the wide side of the field. Had lots of room. Looked downfield, but the Beavers had good defensive coverage in the secondary down there and broke it up. 
Tim Huntley, the defensive coordinator, says to play a team like this, you've got to have good secondary play. Independent Stadium seats 50,549, but we're not even close to sell. I will have Jim talk about that in a moment. Landry to pass on third down. Pressure comes. Throws. It's going to be picked off this time out of the 35-yard line. Return to the 40 and struggling out to the 42-yard line is Harold Johnson, a linebacker, who had a deep drop in the coverage, and Harold steps in front, makes the intercept. They'll mark it at the 39, and the Beavers will take over. Nope, it's Jim Curran. Let's correct ourselves. It's Curitan who was in there as the extra linebacker for the Beavers. Jim, the one-year letterman sophomore from San Jose. Curitan gets the interception. That's his first of the year. And the Beavers' ninth interception already this season. They had 11 total all last year. So the Beavers go on offense now for the second time tonight. Good field position out at the 39. And straight back to pass comes Wilhelm. Looking, guns it over the middle. Got a man caught and dropped. Malone caught it, took a step, dropped it. They might rule it a live ball. Let's see. It rolls back to the 36, and Grambling is recovered, and they will say it's a live football. They say Malone had possession, took a step with it. He was never hit, Jim. He just, when he made the cut, released the football, and it bounded backward to the 36, recovered by Grambling in the first break of the football you know, game. Part of the problem he had was he caught the ball looking back, and when he tried to turn to go downfield, he just got, it came out of there some way, popped out. Big break for the Tigers. They're right back in the game. First down at the Oregon State's 37, where it's marked. No score. 9.46 left in the opening quarter. They'll take Thomas out from the wingback position, move him to a wide receiver. Landry to throw. Big rush on. He throws it into the ground. Incomplete. Almost got sacked off a big beaver rush by Phil Alfieri, the left side defensive tackle, and Rich Haggerty also playing on that side, the left side, the left defensive end. And they almost get Landry for a big loss, but he dumped the football, incomplete second and ten. I think in the NFL they would have called that intentional grounding. <laughs> yeah, or in the grasp of the tacklers. Right, one or the other. Right. Yeah. Second down and ten, far side hash mark 37, sideline left, and open field to the right now as Grambling breaks the huddle. And come to the ball with wide receivers left and right. Straight back to pass. Landry winds up, throws over the middle. It's caught at the 30-yard line, and receiver is shoved backwards immediately by Mike Lopez, but they'll give forward progress down to the 30-yard line. The catch by the tight end, Robert Williams, who is the second leading receiver coming into tonight's game with five catches, 86 yards. So advance the football to just shy of the 30, and Grambling will look now at third down and three. Third and three for Grambling. Gambling. Receivers left and right. They split one of the tight ends. Roy goes out to the far side, the left side of the formation. Here's the pass out near side. Thomas wide open. Got at the 25. Puts a move on Northington. Goes to the 22 and Grambling gets its second first down. Very loose coverage on the play by Northington. Thomas with a catch and then a move from the caught the ball at the 25. But a move on Northington gets three more yards to the 22 and the Tigers keep the drive going. First down at the Beaver 22. And we keep talking about the record uh, situation that's involved in this coach and Coach Robinson of this game and Coach Robinson on the sideline down here has just a covey of television and cameramen around him tonight. Running backs, Dyson to Wayne Hill. Thomas moves back into a wingback formation now and goes in motion. Back to pass. Landry, no faking. Winds up now, dumps the ball out to Thomas at the 25. Got one block, gets to the 20, and Northington wraps him up and drops him after a gain of only two. Landry couldn't find anybody deep, so he just kind of flipped the ball out to the man in motion, which was Thomas, the wingback, going in motion right to left through the formation. Nor Northington and Ose Lewis got there for the tackle at the 20-yard line, and it'll be second down and eight for Grambling at that point. Time of the Nexus scoreboard clock, 8-12 in the quarter. No score. Remember, Nexus for the finest in professional skin and hair care products. Long huddle by the Tigers. Now they break. Second down and eight. Roy tied end to the left. Williams tied end to the right. Wing back is Thomas set to the right. They give it on a straight hitter to Dyson. He crunches to the 15. He's grabbed and thrown backward. Maybe he'll say Lewis, but we'll have to wait and see as they unstack down at the 15-yard line with white shirts all over the place. Gain is to the 15. Jeff Schneider, the middle linebacker, not Lewis. I saw a 7. It was 47 and not 7. And Phil Alfieri combined at the 15. 
So now this will be third down and three for Grambling at the Oregon State 15-yard line, far side hash mark. Sideline left, running room right as Grambling knocking on the door after Darvin Malone's fumble. Wide receivers right and left. Here's Landry to throw. Winds up, dumps the ball out near side. Intercepted by Northern. Dead at the 15. Return to the 20 and back to the 22. They wanted to throw to Thomas the wing. Northington saw it coming. Stepped in front. Makes the interception. Returns out to the 22. And what a year Levance is having. That's his fifth interception of the year. He was tied for fourth in the NCAA. Tied for first in the Pac-10 conference. Starting play tonight at interceptions. And he's got number five, Jim. And quickly, the Beavers have two intercepts tonight night already. A really interesting play, and, and you kind of wonder why Grambling would be throwing in Northington's direction at this point in the field, because he has done so extremely well this season. But they picked that time to throw, and he was there. Beavers with Bynum to the right and Adams to the left. Back to pass. Wilhelm in the pocket, standing in. Can't find anybody. Flag down. That's probably holding. Dumps the ball, and it's intercepted. Terrible pass at the 23-yard line. It'll be Grambling football at the 22-yard line. Yep. It was thrown out, and it was one of the linemen, Sean Smith, who did not rush, but rather dropped out in the flat to cover the screen area. Smith makes the intercept. The penalty is holding, as we guessed, against Oregon State, and the Beavers turn it right back over to Grambling, and that was a terrible pass. It was thrown by Wilhelm right to the lineman, Sean Smith. And he knew as soon as he let it go it was a bad pass, put his hands up over his face, couldn't believe it. The Beavers now have run one play on each of their last two series, right, and fumbled, yeah. turned the ball over right. both times. So they're down at a 22-yard line. You can't give a team like this all this kind of playing advantage. That's right, Jim. Wide receivers right and left now. Roy goes far out to the left. He's technically a tight end, but has been used on a wide out. Back to pass. Landry throws. Got a man open. Williams can't hold it at the goal line. Might have been deflected up in front of him by one of the defensive uh, backs for the Beavers. Odegaard appeared to maybe get a hand on it, but still the ball sailed through to the goal line. Williams was alone, but could not hang on to the football or would have been a touchdown, and it'll be second down and ten. Beaver football brought to you by True Value Hardware Stores, indoors and out. The more you've got to do around around your home, the more you need True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers because they've got what it takes. Second down and 10, back to pass Landry again, blitz on, picked up, thrown deep, out of the end zone, incomplete, trying to hit Thomas the wing down the near side, Odegaard with man-to-man -man coverage, and Don did a very good job for the Beavers, the corner on the near side, Beavers are coming with a blitz, Landry had to throw it immediately and overshoots Thomas with Odegaard on the coverage. And I think on the last play, Odegaard's the guy that made the mistake that allowed the receiver to get open, fortunately they didn't get him the football, but that time, the young freshman from Kennewick did an excellent job, Don Odegaard, 5'11", 180, a freshman playing back back there at that right corner. Third down and 10 now for Grambling. Near side hash mark at the 22-yard line. Beavers get Todd in to rush the passer, hopefully. Back to pass as Landry flags her down. Throws near side. Got a man wide open. Caught it. Slips at the 12 and is down right at the sticks for a first down. It was caught by the tight end, Robert Williams. I think he got first down yardage just inside the 12. Now let's check out the penalty flags as the officials confer back at the 20-yard line. Here's the call. It's motion, I think. Yep, the illegal procedure against Grambling, and that's going to bring this one back, and it'll be third down and 15 as the Beavers get a break. Beaver football brought to you by Blitz Weinhardt and its distributors, a part of the Football Fever fundraising program. Blitz will make a donation to the OSU Athletic Department for every case of Blitz and Blitz Light 12-pack can sold during September. Look for special displays at retail outlets. I tell you, Oregon State could not ask for more breaks than they've had already here in the football game with 6.53 to go in the first quarter. Nobody's put any points on the board as yet, but Oregon State certainly getting advantages. The game breaks both ways, good and bad, but they've had the opportunity with the football. They just haven't been able to do anything with it. They're down. Here's Landry straight back to pass. Safety blitz coming. Winds up, gets it away. It's caught out of the 20-yard line. Down to the 15. First down to the 10 and inside the 10 and down to the 9. Eight-yard line goes Robert Williams the tie end. He was all alone. Landry hits him for first down yardage to the eight before LeVance Northington can finally make the tackle. And that's first down number three for Grambling, all by passing. Now in the first, uh, in the first quarter of this football game. First and goal with 634 left in a scoreless opening quarter. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Beavers go with Lewis, Schneider, and Curitan now at the linebacker spots. First down and goal just inside the eight-yard line. Here's the handoff. Second man is Devereaux. Trying to get outside five, and he might go. He's gone for a touchdown. It's John McFarlane who just checked in for his first play of the game, and he's gone. We're going to flat down, I think, they're on the other 
over across the way. It's going to be against, I think, Grambling. It's going to be either holding or offside. They're marching back up the field. Incidentally, uh, Landry, the quarterback for Grambling, five out of 11 now, 60 yards. So he's having a pretty good uh, evening, good start anyway in the football game. Well, Beavers get a reprieve. It's illegal motion against Grambling. Somebody starting too early. So they'll bring it back to the eight-yard line. We were <laughs> told that John McFarland had no chance to play tonight. He's a wide receiver wingback from Waterproof, Louisiana. I love that name, 163-pound senior. Well, Mr. McFarland can play. He just made the end zone on that play. But fortunately for the Beavers, it comes back. Marked back to the eight-yard line. And it'll be or 13-yard line, marked back from the initial line of scrimmage, the 8 to the 13. First down and goal at the 13-yard line. Landry to pass. Throws outside towards Thomas. Dives and can't get there in the end zone. The corner of the end zone down the near side. Levance Northington on the coverage and did a pretty good job on that coverage for Oregon State. And the pass is thrown incomplete at the 6-10 mark of the quarter. That's the time of the Nexus scoreboard clock. Remember, Nexus for the finest in professional skin and hair care products. It'll be second down and goal for Grambling back at the 13. As soon as we see what Grambling does on this drive, then we'll get Jim on with us other scores from all of today's games. We haven't forgotten you, but with Grambling threatening, we'll hold off and see what happens, first of all, with Grambling's offense. Second down and goal back at the 13. McFarland goes wide to the right. Back to pass. They dump the ball out to the near side. Dropped. Incomplete try Tried to hit the tight end, Robert Williams, swinging out to the near side with coverage by Lopez and Curitan, and Michael almost got there again for a potential interception. Good coverage by the Beavers, and it'll be third down and goal at the 13. And for all of Oregon State's offensive problems and turnovers in the first quarter, Beavers would like to just stop one more play and force Grambling to go for the field goal. Scoreless tie, 6-10 in the quarter. This is a very long quarter. This is like the first half last week. Let's get this baby over with. Bring Marvin Thomas wide to the right. Roy, tight end, flexes out to the left, moves back in at a tight end. Now they flex the other tight end. Williams out to the near side, the wide side of the field. And back to pass Landry. Big rush on. They're going to get him this time all the way back at the 25-yard line. They were really coming. We've also got flags down. Klein and Curitan, the linebacker, and Todd, the defensive end, all get there with flags down back at the line of scrimmage. So let's see what that's about. As Landry gets sacked, it's motion. No, yeah, it's illegal procedure on Grambling. The Beavers will obviously decline this penalty, so instead of a chip shot field goal attempt, attempt Dobohar will be faced with a long one. It's marked back at the 25-yard line. That's where the loss, it's fourth down. Nobahar has not come on the field as yet, so we'll see. Grambling a little confused. Now they finally send the kicking team on, and here comes Ardashir Nobahar. He's a little guy. He's 9 of 9 in PATs, 4 of 6 in field goals this year. He's hit from 41, 34, 37, and 36. This is marked at the 33. Patrick Scott to hold. Angle right. This is a 43-yard attempt by Ardashir Nobahar at the 544 mark of the quarter. Here's the snap, put down and kicked by Nobahar on the way. I don't think it's going to make it. Nope, off to the right, maybe short also. Not good. Timeout of the field from Shreveport with a score Oregon State, nothing. We got a flag. And, yep, we Another do. flag. We better wait. Darryl. Let's hold on. And it's going to be on Oregon State, according to the Grambling players. And if that's the case, depending on the call, uh, we'll see what it is. Uh, they indicated the, the Grambling players came running off, pointing towards Oregon State. Roughing the kicker, was, Jim. Oh, it's roughing the kicker. And that's okay. an automatic first down. I can't believe this. So the Beavers obviously had held Grambling out of the end zone, number one. And number two, the field goal attempt by Nobahar was short and wide to the right. And of all the dumb things to do, that's right. somebody ran into the kicker. They'll mark the penalty. Well, it's going to be down around the 15 market at the 14-yard line is where it'll be. And that's an automatic first down for Grambling at the 14. Oh, my goodness <laughs> sakes, Martha. What were we saying about good breaks and bad breaks? Yeah. That's too bad because the defense had obviously done the job and held Grambling out of there, only to have a crucial penalty come up. 
Now, first down and 10, Grambling at the Oregon State 14. And here's Landry straight back to pass. Winds up, dumps the ball out near side. Williams got it. Move 10 down to the 8. Northington ankle tackles him down at the 8-yard line. And another flag down. And now we're starting to kind of get in that same scenario as a week ago. This is holding on Grambling coming up. By that, I mean the same scenario as last week. All of the millions of holding penalties and penalties in general we had in the Fresno State game. The Oregon State coaching staff... Uh, talking about the officiating for the game or the officials rather assigned to the game, there was, there's a couple of different schools of thought. One is you like to have your own conference. Well, you can't do that here. Secondly, you like to have a split crew. Some people do. Others say, no, let's don't have a split. Let's use all officials, the same officials from the same conference. That way you can get some consistency in their calls. Well, to this point, I don't think the Oregon State coaches can complain about officiating because certainly there have been a lot of flags on the field, but I think it's been a pretty even and, and good call all the way across. But for the Beavers, they just simply can't get out of their own uh, end of the field down here. It seems like they've been there all football game. These officials are from the Southwestern Athletic Association. That's the particular conference Grambling plays in. Penalty, 10 yards back to the 24. First and 20 at that point. Here's Landry to throw. All day, stands in the pocket and guns it near side. Caught, and here's another flag down back of the end zone, and that might be holy. The ball is knocked down. They rule it incomplete at the 14-yard line. Lewis Jose Lewis of the Beavers colliding with the receiver. Now we're going to have to check out the penalty. The pass was intended for Chris Hill, the split end, for Grambling. The Beavers are saying, no, this is against Grambling. Well, let's see. See what the officials have to say about it. No, now the Beavers are going to be marching backwards. I think somebody got caught holding for Oregon State down around the end zone area. Don Odegaard maybe, Yeah, I think Jim? it might have been. I think Don was beaten with a young man cutting from out in the left, cutting across towards the post, and he reached out to grab him, so that'll be a penalty, and it will be a first down again. So here we go. It was pass interference is the call on it rather than holding. So here comes first down again. Do you get the idea <laughs> that we're going to just keep doing this until Grambling scores? That's Jim? right. I think that may be the case. This is the third time now that this this particular sequence of plays that they've started over with first down. The officials now are having a huddle at the football trying to make some determination. I don't know exactly what the problem is, but they're all out consulting now. The uh, referee comes out, wants to talk. Well, no, now he's going to go back, I guess, and talk to somebody else. But they are having quite a discussion. Holding Grambling is the call. Holding Oregon State is the call. Well, so they're going to have to bring the ball back then and offsetting, offsetting penalties. penalties and start over. Now, the question is, where was the ball? It was at the 24-yard line, but I don't know if the officials remember yeah, that. I think that's part of the problem. Send Cowan down there real quick. Quickly, Harold. Go down. Well, I don't understand that call at all. They're going to keep the ball at the 14. They obviously gave us the call, offsetting penalties, holding both sides, but they keep the ball at the 14-yard line. And it's first down. Oregon State defensive coaches to our left screaming about it. Here's McFarlane on a reverse. Gets to the 10. Nailed. Almost lost the football also. Down he goes at the 10-yard line. They really miss, miss Mark the football on this particular sequence. Northington makes the tackle at the 10. The gain is 4, and it'll be second and 6. You cannot give the gain on the last play if they're offsetting penalties, and that's what the officials did. And I think the Oregon State coaches, uh, a couple of the assistants of the head coach down trying to make their case with the officials, but to no avail. The gain was four down to the 10-yard line, and it's second down and six for a first down, 10 for a touchdown. McFarland stays in at the wing back, goes in motion. They give the ball to Wayne Hill with blocking to the five. He is to the goal line and in. Touchdown, Grambling. It's kind of like we guessed. It just appeared it was inevitable uh, that Grambling sooner or later was going to score. They were going to keep lining up with first down all over again. Wayne Hill with a fine run, a very well-blocked play. Right side of the line by the guard, Dwayne Richard, and the tackle. The kick is up and good. Right tackle is Barry Lee. Kick is good by Artashir Nobahar. Timeout of the field from Shreveport. 4-17 left opening quarter score. Grambling 7, Oregon State nothing.
Reggie Hawkins with a kickoff of the four returned out to the 10, 15, 20, and across the 20, knocked down hard out around the 24, five yard line. And we'll let the officials spot the ball. They'll mark it at the 25, far side Ashbark. So the Beavers will go on offense again now, first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. Robert Adams, Reggie Bynum, the wide receivers. Bynum will go to the right and Adams out to the left. Tight end is Ron Heller to the right of the formation. 7 nothing Grambling in a game filled with penalties early on. Bynum in motion back through the formation to the wide side of the play. They go to the run with Carl Lane. Got one blocked by Giacomelli and turns out to the 29-yard line before he's knocked down hard by the cornerback, Jeffrey Smith, who's 6'1", 180, sophomore from right here in Shreveport, gain of four. Let's let our stations identify themselves right here with a 15-second station break. You're listening to Grambling, Oregon State on the Beaver Sports Network. back to pass and he is hit and dropped back at the 19 yard line by Sean Smith that's the first sack of the game for Grambling, Smith is 6'4", 245 from Bogalusa, Louisiana, a two-year Ottoman junior, and gets there to nail Wilhelm back at the 19, a loss of six yards on the play, and will bring up third down and 16. Oregon State offensively very flat so far in the football game. Not very much excitement along that sideline over there. The players do not appear to be very fired up. Now, maybe they'll get that way in a hurry, but to this point, pretty slow. Behind a near side, Montana to the near side in a slot. Go to the three wide receivers, give the ball out a draw to Malone, not going anywhere. It gets out to the 20-yard line, stacked up and knocked backward at the 20-yard line. Good defensive play by Grambling's middle linebacker, Fred Collins, Jr. He's 242, senior from Grambling, the city of Grambling. He, by the way, is the son of the defensive coordinator of the Tigers, Fred Collins, Sr. Okay, punt time as the Beavers do not move the ball at all. We're under three minutes in the quarter. Grambling leading 7 to nothing. Good snap. Here comes the rush. But Stempak gets the punt off and hits a line drive that's taken back at the 38. Return to the 40, out to the 45. And coming to the 48 is Kevin DeSeal. They've had different men back every time. Punt returns and kickoff returns. This time it's DeSeal returning to his own 48. Knocked down there. And Grambling goes on offense first and 10. Mike Matthews, graduate of Sunset High school in Portland makes the tackle. Grambling leads 7-0. Safeway is proud to salute the Oregon State Beavers. Safeway knows it's the spirit of fair play that makes athletes great, and in that spirit, you can know that Safeway works hard to offer honestly fair prices on a wide selection of quality foods. Daryl Lani, Jim Howe, and Hal Cowan, our statistician from Independence Stadium in Shreveport, 7-0 Grambling as the Tigers go on offense again. Now first down at their own 48. Landry with a double fake and straight to pass. Rush coming but gets it away. He's got a man open in the clearance. McFarland can't get there at the 10. Incomplete. McFarland was open as he had beaten Mike Lopez, the strong safety who tried to get over and cover him. McFarland was out in front by about four yards, but Landry hung it up too far that time. Incomplete. There's the attempt for the big play, Jim, and of course Grambling has been very successful with the big play early in the season. They really have done extremely well, and that's the thing Oregon State must do. They had the problem last week with Fresno State. Two big plays killed them in the third quarter, and here tonight, Fresno State right away going for the bomb. Tigers break the huddle to the line of scrimmage. Thomas back in. Lines up wing right. Double tight end set. They give the ball to Wayne Hill on a power slant to the near side. Hits to the 50 and inside of the 48 where Northington and linebacker Jim Curitan make the tackle. Pretty well defended by the Beavers. Gain of only three and it'll be third and seven. Let's get the scores out, Jim. Pass some along and we'll, we'll do this in between plays now for a while and get everybody up to date. Penn State beat Rutgers 17-10. to Miami of Florida beat Boston College 45-10. to Pittsburgh and West Virginia played to a 10 time. Army beat Penn 41-3. Brown beat Rhode Island 32-27. Georgia Tech beat Clemson 14-3. Colgate beat Cornell 21-20. Right back at you in a moment. This is a third down and seven situation for Grambling. Landry straight to pass. Mingo comes with a rush. Throws over the middle. It's caught at the 40 for a first down. Tackle made immediately by Osei Lewis, but it's down at the Beaver 40. We've got flags down again. Robert Williams, the tight end, made the catch. Now let's see about the penalty. It would have been a first down as the officials confer, I think, on Oregon State and maybe after the play. But we're just guessing. Let's see. No signal as yet by the officials. 
It's personal foul against Grambling. Now let's see if it's after the play. No, it's personal foul both ways, offsetting. And they're going to say it's a dead ball foul. It came after the play, so Grambling does get the first down. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, 20 to nothing. Lafayette beat Columbia. Harvard beat Massachusetts 10 to 3. Holy Cross beat Delaware 22 to 6. North Carolina beat VMI 51 to 17. Virginia Tech beat Syracuse 24 to 14. Navy beat Virginia 17 to 13 in an upset. Roy and Williams with the tight ends. First down, Grambling driving left to right at the Beaver 40-yard line. Double fake, Landry to throw. Winds up. Here comes the rush behind, but he gets time. Throws it out of the near side. Caught at the 35-yard line and drilled down. Right there is the receiver. The gain will be five to the 35-yard line to Robert Williams, the tight end again, and it'll be second down and five. The weak side blitz almost got Landry, but he was able to get it off. Purdue beat Notre Dame 35-17. Michigan beat Maryland 20 to nothing. Michigan State beat Western Michigan 7-3. Northwestern beat Northern Illinois 38-16. Iowa beat Iowa State 57-3. Indiana won again, beating Missouri 36-17, and North Texas State beat Kansas State 22-10. That's three in a row for Indiana after that long, long losing streak of theirs. Second down of five. Grambling near side of hash mark at the 35. Landry rolls back to the left to throw the ball. Winds up and now guns the bomb back to the near side of McFarland. Out of bounds. Flat. I think the receiver was out of bounds when he was hit by the Oregon State defender, Don Odegaard, but flags are down, and we're going to have pass interference called against Oregon State. (laughs) Beavers have been hurt by that penalty enough this season already. They certainly have. Georgia beat South Carolina 35-21. Tennessee upset number one Auburn 38-20. Kentucky beat Cincinnati 27-7. Alabama beat Vanderbilt 40-20. And uh, Baylor beat Texas Tech 31-0 in a big game of the Southwest Conference. Nebraska blitzed Oregon 63-0. Washington beat UCLA 21-14. Ohio State beat Washington State 48-32. Texas beat Stanford 38-34. Portland State beat Montana 21-16. Idaho beat Nevada Reno 25-21. Wisconsin beat Wyoming 41-17. And those are the finals. Okay, Jim. The 15-yard penalty for pass interference takes it from the 35 to the 20. And guess what? Here's a familiar situation. It's Grambling first down again. It's Grambling first down a lot regardless of whether Grambling gains yard, yardage or not. 43 seconds left in the quarter. Grambling 7-0, and the Tigers right there again. First down at the 20. McFarlane in motion, right to left, back through the formation. Dyson in Hill, the running backs, back to pass. Got to throw to Hill, coming out of the backfield. Got it, 10, 5, he's gone. He'll walk in. Touchdown, Grambling. difficult. Hill just running a little swing pattern coming out of the backfield. One of the linebackers or the corner on that side got confused, didn't cover. He was wide open and just trots into the end zone. Here's the try for point up by Nobahar, and it is good. We have timeout from Independence Stadium in Shreveport with the score. 35 seconds left in the quarter. Grambling, 14. Oregon State zip. Kickoff goes to Rob Thomas, takes it the two-yard line, returns out across the 15-20 and out to the 22, and flags down again. Thomas returned for 20, but we've got flags down, and we're going to have illegal block or a chop block, I believe, is going to be called on Oregon State here. 
And the Beavers will be back up further, back around. Well, they'll go half the distance, and it'll be back around the 11-yard line, I would assume, where Oregon State will start offensively on this possession. In last week's game, there were 26 penalties in the football game. That record might fall tonight because we've had one on about every other play so far here in the first quarter of the football game. The uh, head coach, Dave Cragthorpe, had the offensive team around him over there, giving them a little lecture, I think, trying to get them fired up. Again, the offense, no first downs for the Beavers, and minus yardage, I think, and uh, minus two yards is the first quarter out, but 28 seconds to go, and the Beavers trailing 14 to nothing. Can you My, believe? Minus two yards? Goodness. That's right. The Air Force is not doing well. Well, here we go again. Backed up to the 11-yard line now is where the Beavers start this possession. First down and 10. Split running backs. They give it to Malone on a dive. He's out to the 13 and struggles ahead to the 15-yard line. Fred Collins grabbed him, but Darwin wouldn't go down and gains four to the 15. Smith's Home Furnishings reminds you to kick off great savings at all Smith's Home Furnishing stores. Smith's is throwing great values your way with complete home furnishings for every room of your home. Smith's Home Furnishings. Great quality. Great prices. Second and six, Oregon State it will not be another play in the quarter as it's ticking down. Three, two, one, and now zero. That's the end of the first quarter from Shreveport, Louisiana, with a score. The Tigers of Grambling State University, 14, and the Beavers of Oregon State, nothing. Second down and six as we start the second quarter, and here's Wilhelm back to pass. In the pocket, looking, looking, finally jumps the ball to Jordan, got one great block, 15, turns out to the 20. Lester gave him a terrific block back around the line of scrimmage, and it's Lane, not Jordan, Carl Lane gaining out to the 20-yard line for eight yards on the completion from Wilhelm where it'll be third down and two. Terrific block by Lester. Yeah, and he was a long way from where he snapped the ball. He ended up clear on the outside. Got a great block on one of, the, I think, one of the linebackers trying to get through there. Did a good job and was able to get Lane out for a few-yard pickup. Beavers now third and about one. Still looking for that first, first down. That's right. Bynum wide to the right. They'll go to the tight formation as they get the extra tight end. Phil Ross in there. Lane Malone, the running backs, give it to Darwin on a straight hitter, and he's got it. 22-yard line and down, and that will be enough for the first down. For Grambling, in on the tackle. First of all, Curtis Maxey from Indianapolis, a big tackle, 285-pound sophomore, and then he got some help. But it's a first down, and finally the Beavers get their first first down of the game, and it comes here in the early going of tonight's second quarter with Grambling leading 14-0 starts becoming very important that the Beavers put a drive together. Bynum to the right and Adams to the left. Split backs with Heller the tight end to the right of the formation. They go to the draw to Malone, trying to get outside. Hits to the 25 and struggles out near the 26. Lost the football, but well after the play. And will gain three and maybe four yards in the play. Good hard run by Darwin. The middle linebacker, Fred Collins, makes the tackle and he gets help from Kevin Jackson, the cornerback on that side. They mark it at the, well, right at the 25, so the gain is only three, as it turns out, and it'll be second down and seven at that point. Just underway, second quarter, Darrell Lonnie, Jim Howe from Shreveport, 14-0, Grambling leading. Keller, the tight end, flexes out to the left. Bynum comes back in motion to the formation towards the wide side of the field. Grambling's offside. Flags go everywhere. Lane carries the ball and loses back to the initial line of scrimmage, the 22, in the arms of the big guy, James Polk. But Grambling was clearly offside. The only question is now, was there movement by somebody from Oregon State that drew them offside? That's what Grambling players are going to signify that Oregon State drew them off. It is going to be illegal procedure against Oregon State. So the play will hold up. It will be declined, I'm sure, and it'll be third down and ten. And it looks like the infraction against Oregon State must have been a lineman that moved or something because uh, Oregon State, Bynum went in motion from the far side of the field coming to the near side. Lester goes out to talk to the official to find out what happened. We didn't, I didn't see anything from the glasses. I see no, saw I no either. movement. But then somebody could have picked a hand up, and we couldn't have seen that. 
Well, it's back to the 22, the initial line of scrimmage, third down and 10, and it appears the Beavers are going to use a timeout right here. It is. Timeout Oregon State. So let's send it back to the stations. We have timeout from Shreveport, 13.04 and a half. Score, Grambling, 14, Oregon State, nothing. Just updated our scores. We'll pass along some of those night game updates in a moment for you. We're ready to play. Third down and 10 at the 22. Dave Cragthorpe not happy with the officiating on the field during that last timeout. Finally told to get off. Here's Wilhelm to pass. Dumps it out. Caught by Hoche with a running back. Needed a block. Doesn't get it. Hits out to the 25 and then to the 26. Very well defended by Grambling's middle linebacker, Fred Collins. And then one of the big defensive linemen, Marvin Ayers, gets over to help out and hold the gain to sh short yardage of four only at the 26. Just a little swing out to the near side trying to set a screen for Hoche, but it wasn't very well blocked. And it'll be fourth and six. And the Beavers are going to have to pump the football again now with Chip Stempeck. At the 1334 mark left to go in this first quarter, or second quarter, first half. It is Pena, not Stempak, kicking this time. Glenn Pena, and he sails a beauty. Taken at the 23, returned to the 25, out to the 30, and then down at the 31-yard line. Returning for Grambling, Claude Landry for eight from the 23 to the 31. Chuck Kirshner on the special teams makes the tackle for Oregon State. of Grambling goes back on offense at that point. In the East, a final now in a night game. Temple has defeated East Carolina 21 to 7. Updating in the Midwest, Oklahoma leads Minnesota, the number one team, or depending on the polls, number one or number two team in the nation. Finally playing a game. They lead Minnesota 10 0 in the second quarter. Halftime, Oklahoma State 24, Miami of Ohio 10. Here's a final North Texas State has defeated Kansas State 22 to 10. What a struggle for K-State this year. Coach resigned after the second game. Jim Dickey Dyson on the carry. Hits to the 35 and is out to the 36 or 7. LeVance Northington ankles him down but it's a gain of 5. In the South, some updates now. Florida in the third quarter leading Mississippi State 27-20. Kansas at the half leads Florida State 17-10. Mississippi in the second leads Tulane 13-3. Arkansas in the second rolling over to Mexico State 31-7 at the half. Houston 35, Louisville 14 at the half. Rice 17, Lamar 7 at the half. T or SMU 35 and TCU 7 in that big game of the Southwest Conference. Dyson on the carry, not going anywhere this time. 39 and uh, pushed back at the 39-yard line. Negligible yardage. It'll be third down coming in around three. Don Odegaard from the secondary, and then up front, Haggerty and Alfieri make the tackle for Oregon State. Good defensive effort that time, and it'll be third down and three. Let's see if I've given you all the scores. Texas A&M leads Tulsa in the third, 32-10. to 10. In the west, uh, nothing in from night games too early yet. Portland State earlier today beat Montana 21-16. We told you Oregon... Lost uh, to Nebraska, 63 to nothing. Third down and three, Grambling at their own 39 from the near side hash mark. McFarlane in wing back in motion, gets the ball, cuts at the 40, and gets a first down out to the 44 before Jose Lewis on the near side steps in front and makes the tackle. Very well blocked that time by Grambling, and the guy out in front leading the way was Dwayne Richard, a 6'2", 240 senior from Melville, Louisiana. And for Grambling, that's first down number eight on the day. Paul Saunders helped on the tackle for the Beavers. Beavers go with, they've changed up the linebackers. They have Harold Johnson, Paul Saunders, keep Jose Lewis in there. Up front with Klein, Haggerty, Alfieri, and Gino Mingo. Corners, Northington and Odegaard. Here's the play, second man through. Fumble, but Dyson gets on it. 
get to the 45. He was knocked down by Lewis, fell out to the 47 or 8, and as he was going down, lost the ball, but pops on it at the 47. So it will be a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down and seven. Oregon State Athletics would like to thank G.I. Joes for their sponsorship of Oregon State Radio Broadcast. And for you Portland area listeners, you'll be happy to know that G.I. Joes has opened their new Tualatin store off I-5 at the Durham exit. Second down and seven Tigers at their own 47-yard line. Exactly 10 minutes to go in the half and Grambling leading 14-0. Back to pass Landry, straight back. Winds up and here comes the bomb down the far side to Williams. Oh, it's Thomas overthrown to the 15-yard line, incomplete with Northington on the coverage. That time and sending, instead of sending the wing back back in motion, they just sent him on a straight fly pattern down the field. Northington had man-to-man coverage and stayed with him. Well, they have great speed, Darrell, in those receivers, too. These young men can really get up and down that field. And for Oregon State, it was a little tough to stay with those folks out there. Third down and seven for Grambling at their own 46 to shy of the 47-yard line. Jack. Oregon State, to get something going really badly, needs a big play by the defense. Somebody's got to come up with a football or something and turn this thing around, or it could be a very long night. Beavers. Got a couple of interceptions in the first quarter, but it didn't help the offense. Landry to pass with a big rush on, throws over the middle, caught inside the 45 and down to the 41-yard line, and that'll be first down yardage. Drilled it into the tight end, Robert Williams, and the Beavers are having a terrible time covering him tonight. That's about his fourth catch of the night. It is. Fourth reception for Williams and ninth first down for Grambling as they keep the drive going on a third down and long situation. Oregon State that time went for the rush, had somebody coming on big blitz on the quarterback, but didn't get there in time, and uh, Grambling able to get somebody open, and as Darrell said, Oregon State having a tough time with the tight end. The tight end hurt them last week against Fresno State also. And what they're doing again tonight, kind of like Fresno State, Jim, is going to that two tight end set, balancing up up front. Here comes the draw play to Dyson, runs by one man. He ran right by Klein, who didn't see him inside the 40, and then Lewis gets there for the tackle at the 38-yard line. The gain will be three only, and it'll be second down and seven. As we tie, as we tell you, the time of the Nexus scoreboard clock, nine minutes to go in the half. Grambling 14 nothing. Remember Nexus for the finest in professional skin and hair care products. Second down at seven at the 38-yard line, driving into Beaver territory. Grambling moving right to left now. Thomas back in at wing back, lines up wing right with the two tight ends. Running back's the same. They give it to Wayne Hill and a power off guard. Hits to the 36 and then is dragged down. Paul Saunders. Nope, it's not Saunders. We'll check it. One of the Beaver linebackers, I believe. No, it's Mingo. Gino Mingo stepped up in the hole, hits Hill, and knocks him down at the 36. Gain of a couple. Third down and five for Grambling at the Beaver 36-yard line. Grambling controlling the football will have by far the best of it possession time come halftime tonight if this continues. Oregon State's defensive coach is trying to figure out what they can do to fire up this football team on the sideline. A lot of discussions going on over there. Thomas wide to the right and Kevin Roy out to the left. Two wide receivers now back to pass Landry looking for the quick one. Guns the ball over the middle. Caught inside the 25 or another first down. Down to the 23 yard line to Marvin Thomas. That wing back again. Finally the tackle made by Paul Saunders. And by Northington down to the 23, but Grambling keeps it going again with yet another big play on third down. Great catch by the receiver. A little curl pattern came from the uh, right uh, right side, went down, just curled into about the 25, came across, jumped in the air, caught the football. Great job. First down to the 22-yard line. Beavers with Lewis. Curitan at the linebackers and Schneider. That's the third linebacker in there now. Here comes Thomas in motion back through the formation. Here comes Landry to throw the football. Guns it out near side. Hill dropped it at the 20 as Odegaard came over to cover. And Jennifer Wayne Hill swinging out of the backfield. That's a play they hit earlier for a big game. There is a flag down and we'll check out the penalty. And he was open on that one, Darrell. The pass was a little bit in front of him. Kind of a hard catch for him to make, but he was open. Odegaard did not get there quite in time, so let's see if they go back to that one fairly soon. The penalty will be against uh, Grambling, and it'll be motion? Right. I guess it's motion. They've done that a couple of times tonight, and we've had that call, along with a raft of others, all the penalties that we've had. The Shreveport area, by the way, very nice area. About 300,000 people in here. The stadium, as we said, seats a little over 50,000. They play the Independence Bowl here, and uh, big football country. 
Second down and 10. It will be as the Beavers will decline the penalty. Let's mention, Jim, your halftime guest tonight will be Jack Davis, Oregon State Athletic Faculty Representative and the president of the NCAA. And I know you'll have an inter interesting conversation with him. That's right. We came through Dallas on the way down. The Dallas <laughs> newspapers are full of the NCAA these days. Yep. Fact, let me tell you, front page sports everywhere. Story on almost every school in the Southwest Conference. Here's McFarlane in motion, back to pass, Landry, blitz on, they don't get there initially, winds up, guns it away, incomplete, Landry felt the heat coming that time, and there isn't anybody even close to the football for grambling, he threw in the general area of Robert Williams, but wound up throwing it over the sidelines, and Williams is about 15 yards from where the ball lands, Klein got a good rush, the Beavers were coming with a couple of the linebackers, and Harold Johnson also got there, and put good pressure on Terrell Landry, the Grambling quarterback. It'll be third down. Landry stats, Jim. Nine out of 21, 113 yards. Third down and 10, 23. Now, the Beavers have not been able to stop a third down Grambling play in some time. 7.27 left to go in the half. 14-0 Grambling from the far side ash mark. Here's Landry to throw. Time initially, only four rush. Guns it out near side. It's caught at the 16 and tackled immediately. Short of a first down is Wayne Hill. Good play by Osei Lewis. They're going to mark it at the 17. That's a gain of six, and it's fourth down. Grambling coaches booth is to our right, and everybody yelling field goal, and here comes Arda Sheer Nubahar onto the field. Artis, you're born in Iran, raised, I guess, lives in Georgia, Buford, Georgia. Buford, He's the leading scorer on the football team, by the way, for Grambling. And he'll try this one from the 24 angle right, a 34-yard attempt. Down by Patrick Scott, kicked on the way, barely gets there, but it's wide to the right, not good. Really didn't get, appeared to maybe stub the foot as he came through on the follow-through. At any rate, got way under the football and kicked kind of a pop fly that barely got there and sails wide to the right, not good. So not very long range on the field goal attempt, but Nobahar misses it, and the score remains at 14 to nothing as the Beavers go on offense. You know what they say about kickers, Darrell, a grambling team here tonight, white shoes and white socks to the mid-calf. Not their kicker. Black shoes and socks all the way to the knee. <laughs> and has this little bag he carries around, right? right? Yeah. That's right. All right, the Beavers again. Now here comes flag. Somebody started too early for Oregon State. We're going to have motion. It was Tom Emmons, the left side offensive tackle. Tom has moved from defense over to offense and is starting tonight left tackle. Of course, he played offensive tackle the last couple of years, but give him some due. He gets the penalty, but give him some due to the fact that he hasn't practiced on offense until really the last week. Five-yard penalty against, uh, it's a procedure penalty. This is a fifth penalty against the Beavers, and it'll be first and 15 back of the 15. Oregon State has done absolutely nothing on offense tonight. First down and 15. Bynum in motion, right to left through the formation. And back to pass, Wilhelm. Here comes pressure. Eric steps up in the pocket, going to run with a football line of scrimmage and dives ahead of the 18-yard line and gains three, where it'll be second down and 12, as we tell you that OSU football is being brought to you by True Value Hardware Stores. Indoors and out, the more you've got to do around your home, the more you need True Value Hardware Stores and home centers because they've got what it takes. Family getting a very good pass rush on Oregon State, and that has really interfered with the passing game. Uh, Wilhelm likes that drop of five steps or so. He's not able to take it because of guys looping around, driving him out of the pocket, so that's really interfered. He doesn't have time to set up and throw. Maxi. No, make it Adams is back in there now to tackle a go along with Polk up front for Grambling. Wilhelm looks for the quick out pattern, gets it to Bynum, bobbled it, holds on and goes down to the 21 for a very short yardage. They went to the audible that time, thinking Grambling was coming with a blitz, and Wilhelm throwing the quick out pattern to Bynum for short yardage. Threw it kind of low, and Reggie down to a knee to get it at the 21, and it'll be third down and nine. Bynum gets his second catch, 544 left in the half. Grambling leading 14 to nothing. Beavers send Bynum wide to the left of the formation on third down and bring Adams out to the right. Running backs stay the same. Malone and Lane, everybody in the pattern as Wilhelm looks to throw and guns the ball far side. Up for grabs. Going to be intercepted by Anderson. Tackled immediately by Bynum at the 40. Timeout of the field with a score. Grambling 14, Oregon State nothing.
First down play, give the ball to Wayne Hill outside, cuts around the 35, goes to the 30, and out of bounds at the 29-yard line for a first down for Grambling. That's number 11 in the first half. Wayne Hill, power sweep to the right, picks up a Grambling first down, and now they're knocking on the door as they get it down to the 29-yard line. Here's the play, give it to Dyson straight ahead. He'll get little, hits to the 27-yard line. Bob Klein down to the bottom of the stack for Oregon State to make the tackle. The game this time will only be two to the 27. Northington and Lopez also up from the secondary to help out, and it'll be a second down and eight call. Time of the Nexus scoreboard clock, 4.55 and a half. Remember Nexus for the finest in professional skin and hair care products. Jim. And we think that Grambling really is uh, kind of running through the playbook out there now. Ahead 14 to nothing, 4.45 to go in the first half, and they're really running just about as they want on the Oregon State defense. Second down and eight, and Landry wants a timeout as Oregon State lined up a little bit differently. Grambling calls time, and we'll send it to the stations. 4.35 of the half. Timeout score. Grambling, 14, Oregon State, nothing. Terrell Landry called the timeout for Grambling. Now we're ready to get back to play. It'll be a second down and eight situation with 4.35 and a half. Here's Landry rolling back to the left to pass. Winds up and guns it to the far side. It's going to be out of the end zone incomplete. Beavers had excellent coverage that time with Odegaard, the cornerback. Deep in the end zone. Had very good coverage. The intended receiver was the wingback again, Marvin Thomas. But the Beavers defended very well that time. And it will be third down and eight now for Grambling at the Oregon State. 27 yard line. We're in the first half, late going first half. If you just joined us, 428 and a half, Grambling leading 14 to nothing on a night when the Beavers' offense has been non existent. Well, talking about this Grambling club and Eddie Robinson, the coach, uh, he's had 25 consecutive winning seasons at Grambling. Just amazing figures he's put up. Back to pass. Here comes the blitz. Landry with time. Winds up, throws. Monson knocked it away. Schneider picks it up off in the air at the 25. Returns to the 30, 35. He's still going to run away fullback to the 40. And he almost <laughs> lateraled it, Jim. Oh, he had thoughts going down. He scared me to death that he was going to lateral the football. But what a run by Jeff Schneider, graduate of Sunset High School in Portland. The sophomore with the intercept. His first of the year, the Beavers. Third in interception here in the first half tonight and that means as a team now the Beavers equal last year's total output of interceptions with 11. Now we, we have a flag but it's, it's after the play it's a dead ball situation. The interception will hold up. Now let's see where the who's going to be assessed the penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct well, I don't know. The official referee didn't say against who. He just said unsportsmanlike conduct. I, I guess it's on he, the Beavers. I wonder if he pointed at the at the Oregon State bench. Is that what he did? I think he may have pointed at the Oregon State bench. It's a 15-yard penalty. Brings it all the way back to the 25. Beaver coaches are really complaining on the sidelines. Huh. First down back at the 25. I don't know, Jim. You might be right. It, uh, it was after that, after the play, and it didn't seem to be anything that happened on the field yeah, where the no, players I don't think were. it was. And when he made the indication, he kind of put his arm behind him and pointed towards the Oregon State bench. So I think it may be on one of the coaches. We'll have to check later and see it. I'm not sure, but that's what it appears to be. At Oregon State, that's about penalty number six or seven. And uh, we really had a lot of flags here tonight. Unsportsmanlike conduct, Oregon State. Back to the 25 comes the football. The Beavers' best offense tonight has been the defense. That's Three interceptions right. and a great run by Schneider on that intercept. Now the Beavers will have to start again. They've had terrible field position throughout the half. First down at their own 25 with 4.16 left to go. Here's Wilhelm to pass. Four rush for Grambling. Throws over the middle. Got hell of the tight end. 30, 35. First down, 40 and out to the 41. Don't throw any flags. Six, yep, here comes one. I shouldn't have said anything. And no first down. He didn't quite make it. Yeah, he did, Jim. Oh, I'm sorry. Back to the... I forgot that the initial line of scrimmage was a 40. Thank you. And Clipping. Oregon State. <laughs> Holy jumping up and down, Martha. <laughs> Wouldn't make any difference, I guess, would it? <laughs> no, some, you kind of get the feeling that regardless of what happens, it's... It, it's not going to go. If you gain yardage, there's going to be a flag down. The play, <laughs> the plays when there is no flag are the plays that Oregon State loses yardage or throws incompletions. 
So back to the 22-yard line comes this penalty for clipping, and it's first down and a, a mile. First down and 28. They have to go to the 50-yard line. Initial line of scrimmage to the 40 after the dead ball situation. Here's a draw. Lane stumbled over his own offensive guard. Hits to the 25 and out to the 27. That's too bad because it was very well blocked, and there was a hole there. But Carl hit the back of one of the linemen's legs and stumbles down to the 27. Dave Giacomelli it was, Jim tells me, the right guard from Richmond, California. Giacomelli had a good block. He did a good job taking the grambling Tiger out of there, the defensive lineman. But Lane stepped on his foot, I think, as he went by, and down he went. Gain of five out to the 27 by Lane, and now the Beavers are going to use a timeout here to talk about it. So we'll go back to our stations. Timeout, 323 and a half, score. Grambling, 14, Oregon State, nothing. this time out, we've had a big discussion on the Oregon State sidelines. I'll let Jim talk about it. Okay, apparently there's a discussion as to whether Oregon State did or did not call a timeout. The Beavers do not believe they did. Coach Craigthorpe had uh, the umpire come over, the referee rather, come over and he talked to him. And running back coach Jim Prado was out there and he has been talking. They were indicating that the assistant coach apparently indicated for the timeout or something. I don't know what the call is, but now they're still discussing it with Craigthorpe who is out on the field and uh, turns and walks back towards the Oregon State bench. 3.23 to go in the first half. 14 to nothing Grambling leading. Uh, the Tiger band from Grambling getting ready to perform here at halftime. And Oregon State's offense really not able to accomplish a thing here in the first half. And then when they have gotten some good plays, they've always been called back by penalties. Adams and Bynum to the left of the formation. Wilhelm wheels back to the right and throws to the tight end. Heller, 35, broke a tackle, 40 up the sidelines, out to the 45 and out of bounds. Nice run by Ron after the catch was made. Sent everybody to the left of the formation. All of the receivers, with the exception of the tight end, drift him out of the flat, hit him, and then Heller broke a tackle and carries all the way out to the 45-yard line. Big gainer, but remember, the Beavers had a long ways to go. They have to get to the 50-yard line for first down. It's marked at the 44, and it's third and six, and it kills the clock with 3.16 left to go in the half. But at least now the Beavers have a chance to get the first down. Third down and six situation. Receivers to the left. Montagna's back in. Wilhelm throws. It's caught midfield, and Bynum's tackle backward. Now, I don't know if he made it. I don't think so. See where the, no, the officials are going to mark it where Bynum landed. It's not even close at the 48. That's not close. Fourth down and two. And I'm guessing here, but I'm guessing that Oregon State goes for it. Down 14 nothing with three minutes left in the half. Yeah, I think they have to. They have to gamble again because they really have played so poorly here in the first half. You know the coaches want to try to make something good happen. Now Wilhelm is going to call a timeout. He walks over. They do want timeout for Oregon State. Why don't you grab the score sheet, Jim? We'll keep it here this time as the Beavers call the timeout with 2.49 left to go in the half. It'll be a fourth down and two situation, and the Beavers are not going to punt the football. They want to talk about what they want to run on offense on this fourth and two situation. And this, by the way, is their final timeout. Now the half. Here's the scores. Purdue beat Notre Dame today, 35-17. Michigan beat Maryland 20 to nothing. It looks like Bo Schembechler's got a for real football team. Michigan State squeaked by Western Michigan 7-3. The Northwestern Milecats won again today. They beat Northern Illinois 38-16. Iowa beat Iowa State 57-3. Indiana, the surprise team in the, that part of the country, beat Missouri 36-17 for their third win. North Texas State beat Kansas State 22-10. And we had a halftime score of Oklahoma State leading Miami of Ohio by a score of 24 to 10. In the West, 
Wisconsin beat Wyoming 41-17. Idaho beat Nevada Reno 25-21. Portland State beat Montana 21-16. Texas beat Stanford 38-34. Ohio State beat the Cougars of Washington State 48-32. Washington beat UCLA in a come for behind effort in Seattle 21-14. And Nebraska just blitzed Oregon by a score of 63 to nothing. We'll go down the. Excuse me. John. I was going to say we're told that's the worst loss in Oregon history, possibly. And the guy that's with us would know that. That's right. Because he was there when the previous worst loss was. Mr. Hal Callen, the sports information director at Oregon State, who formerly held the same position with Oregon, said he made a trip to Oklahoma one time that was less than a thrill. Got beat 61 to 3, was it? Or 63 to 3. Is that one of the reasons why Oregon got rid of him, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> blame, we'll blame him for this one tonight. Yeah. Too, maybe. Yeah. Fourth down and two at the 48. We'll get on the phone and update those night scores for you, by the way. And Jim will have uh, have the nighttime scores for you a little bit later on in our halftime proceedings. We'll start our halftime tonight with Jim and his special guest, Jack Davis, Oregon State's athletic faculty representative and, of course, the president of the NCAA. Oregon State huddling back at the 40. And the Beavers trailing 14 to nothing. And fourth down and two. They're going to go for it. I don't think there's any question about that. So they've called the play and are getting ready to, to run from the uh, their own 48-yard line. Uh, during the timeout, the Grambling defensive team, the entire team, came to the near sideline to talk to the uh, to the coaches. And now the referee has come over. He is talking to Coach Eddie Robinson. I think he wants them to back the players up from the sideline. I think is the thing that he's asking that the uh, Tiger players are getting a little excited. They're getting right out there trying to cheer their team on again to stop Oregon State on this fourth and two. So we'll see what happens. Either that or Eddie was explaining the rules to the official. That I'm might sure. be too. That might yeah. Be, yeah, that could be. Now on this play, no. Montana and Bynum will be the wide receivers, and they both go to the left of the formation. Beavers with twin running backs on fourth and two near side of hash mark at their own 48-yard line. See what the call is here. Heller the tight end. They fake back to pass comes Will Helmer. They rush on, throws tight end. Heller got it 40, 35 down the sideline, 30, 25, and out of bounds. And the Beavers come up with a big, big play on fourth down and two. And we're going to get another flag way down at the 10-yard line where a Beaver wide receiver, Montagna, got involved with a grambling defensive back. And we'll see who they caught there. The game goes to the 25. I'll give you three games. Yes, is yeah, caught. yeah, it's the team in the white shirts tonight that we broadcast for. Personal foul, Oregon State. Now, that's a dead ball penalty, so again, the line of scrimmage will be where Heller's gain was, the 25. Then they'll mark off 15, and Oregon State will get the privilege of first and 25. Now, we've seen this happen a couple of times before tonight, folks. I mean, there's 2.42 left to go. And we're playing a long ways from home, and, <laughs> right. and you can tell it in a <laughs> in a hurry. <laughs> Way back to the 40 comes the uh, mark off, so it's first down and 25 at the Grambling 40 with 2:42 left to go. That's too bad. That nullifies a lot of the big gain by Heller. Here comes the draw to Malone. Line of scrimmage and tripped by the middle linebacker Fred Collins just as he tried to cut it to the right and outside. Goes down to the 38, a gain of two only. If Darwin could have eluded Collins, he had a lot of running room in front of the Grambling bench down below us to our right. And it'll be second down and 23. On the line back, uh, linebacker playing a great job for Grambling is Joseph Williams from Baton Rouge, a junior two-year letterman at 6'3", 226, and he really is giving Oregon State fits also. Second down to 23, Wilhelm to pass. Receivers held up, gets it over the middle, caught by Bynum out across to the 30-yard line. Reggie will get his fourth catch of the night. This takes it to the Grambling 30, and it'll be third down and 15. The thing that all these penalties do, of course, they, when they back you up into that first and long situation, it kind of takes the short passing game away from you. Or if you proceed with it, then you come up in a situation like Oregon State has right now. They've Yes, they've gained yards but it's still third down and 15. We're down to a minute 39 and counting in the half. 14-0 Grambling, third and 15. Marked it at the 31-yard line. Ball on the near side of hash mark. Now Bynum goes in motion. Back to pass comes Wilhelm. Here comes Fesher. They almost get him. Now he winds up and cranks the bomb to nobody in particular. Bynum knocks it away. Reggie almost made a great catch down to the goal line. Another flag down. It was kind of thrown up for grabs. Kevin Jackson had the best chance at it for Grambling, but Bynum made a great play to get up in the air above Jackson, and then with the left hand winds up knocking it down. Obviously, he tried to make the catch and almost made a tremendous play, but couldn't hold it. The penalty is holding 
against, you know who's penalties against, guys in the white shirts. And Grambling will decline this, and it'll be fourth down. Let's see if we uh, bring Nielsen on the field for a long field goal attempt, or the Beavers go for fourth and 15 at the 30. With a minute 21. Nope, no. Nielsen's on the sidelines, and the Beavers go for it. Fourth down. Nose of the ball just inside the 31-yard line. Back to pass. Wilhelm, here comes pressure. Ducks away from it to the left to give himself time to throw. Now winds up and guns in zone. Bind up, but a crowd in play with double coverage. Reggie might have mistimed his jump a little bit that time. Got up a little bit too early and couldn't get to the football. And it falls incomplete of the end zone. Left flat of the end zone. Far side of the field from us incomplete. So the Beavers finally generated some offense on that possession, but to naught as Grambling will take over first and ten. Yeah, but you have to think, Darrell, that the Oregon State offensive unit now knows they can move the football. They've got to contend with the guys in the striped shirts, but if they can solve that problem, then they can move the football. And we're down 14 points, 14 to nothing, so they're still very much in the football game, but with a full half to go. So certainly they have to feel encouraged by that last drive. Certainly they're not satisfied with it. They didn't get any points, but they did move the football. Go to the run with Dyson on the carry. Scrambles out to the 34-yard line, hitting between left guard and center. Ose Lewis, the linebacker, and then down at the bottom, Phil Alfieri make the tackle, the gain of three, 31 to the 34, and it'll be second down and seven, and it appears Grambling will be content now to sit on the football and take a 14-0 lead in at halftime. Beavers do not have any timeouts remaining. Well, I'll take that back. Scoreboard shows that they do have one timeout left, but they're not going to use it here. 43 seconds left. Hand off. Dyson straight ahead. Haggerty gets him as he crosses the 35 and out to the 37. Another gain of three, and it'll be third down and four, and the clock's going to count down. Grambling apparently will just run one more play, and they might not need to do that because they're really slow on stacking the players up front. They haven't marked the ball in play yet. We're down to 24 seconds. Now they finally mark the ball in play. Grambling does not have to run a play. 19 seconds in the half. 14-0 Grambling on a third down and four situation at their own 37 as they break the huddle. And it appears they'll get the play off. 10 seconds left in the half. Landry gives it. Fumble! Beavers are going to get the ball as the clock runs down to four seconds left to go at the 37-yard line. Wayne Hill dropped the handoff and a big stack up of players. The Beavers have recovered the football and we'll see if we can find out who. It's at the 36. The clock snuck another second off. It's down to three seconds. Well, let's see. Haggerty, Osei Lewis, evidently. Lewis and Monson were at the bottom, and Osei Lewis will give credit for it unless we're uh, corrected later. Osei Lewis on the recovery. The Beavers have an injured player, and I think it's Phil Alfieri back at the 40-yard line. Beavers make the recovery, and now we'll see whether it's throw the ball to the end zone or get... This will be, let's see, line of scrimmage 37. Mark it back to around the 44. This will be a 54-yard attempt. Now, his longest, his previous long was at Arizona State a year ago in Tempe. And I think it was 50, 54 yards, was it? I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah 54. 54. I'm sorry, it was 54 against Oregon last year. That's his previous long kick. All right, let's see if Jim can duplicate that feet now. Not much... What wind there is is against Nielsen, and it's 10 miles an hour at least, so this is a very, very difficult attempt. But the Beavers have no choice. Two seconds, they snuck another second off the clock. Going to be out of time. Kick it. Here's Nielsen's boot. It's got a chance. It is on the way, and good! And Nielsen hits a 54-yarder to end the half. Well, technically, one second. Now they run the clock out. Oh, jumping up and down, Mark. Nielsen is a perfect 14 in a row field goals. That against at least a 10 mile an hour win, 54 yards. Mr. and Mrs. Nielsen, you've got a kicker in that family. You certainly do. <laughs> Talked to him this afternoon, though. Darrell, he said he had his foot all warmed up, so we figured he knew. He is really a nice young man and easy to root for. All right, we've reached the end of the first half from Independence Stadium in Shreveport, Louisiana, with a score. Grambling 14 and Oregon State 3. team. Eddie Robinson's had about 200 players in the National Football League. In the last six years, Robinson's won 47 games. And during the same six, Oregon State has won about six. The last five games mentioned here, the Tigers are 4-1, lost only to SMU. 
We're ready to go. They're going to kick the football to call a play-by-play. Here's Darrell. All right, thanks, Jim. Thanks to Jack Davis, our special halftime guest, Rob Thomas and Reggie Hawkins. Go deep for the Beavers. Twin safety back at the goal line as Artashir Nobahar gets ready to kick off and will be underway with the second half. Grambling leading 14-3 to as we start the final 30 minutes. Interesting to note that most of the discussion in the hallways at halftime when I ventured out was... What do you think of the officiating here in the South? <laughs> yeah. That was the question asked. Thanks a lot. And I told him yeah, what I good. thought of it. However, I want to work next week, too, so... <laughs> You're not going to tell us. So I won't repeat it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nobahar will kick off left to right now as uh, Grambling will defend the gold, which is the north goal to our left, Beavers the south goal to our right, waiting for the scoreboard clock to count down. Now it has. They put 15 minutes up on it, and we should be underway shortly. Hawkins and Thomas twin safety deep. We never did get any halftime statistics, so if indeed we ever receive any, we'll pass them along. Kick short to an up man. It's Ross at the 25, returned out to the 30 and spins out to the 34. Good return by Phil Ross, and unlike so many people who are in those up positions, not the uh, deep secondary people awaiting the kick, sometimes those people will grab the ball, fumble it around, be confused, not know whether to run with it or where to run with it, but that was not the case with Ross at all. He fielded on the hop and took off upfield immediately, and the Beavers get their best field position possession-wise in this game. First down out of their own 34, moving from our right to our left. They will go to a one-setback offense now. We have not seen that too much in tonight's game as yet. Here's Wilhelm to throw, swings it out to the far side, knocked down, incomplete. Good play by the Grambling corner. They were trying to get the ball to the tight end, Phil Ross, who's starting at that position here in the second half, but Jeffrey Smith, the corner, on that side, gets there and knocks it down. A good individual effort, incomplete, and it'll be second down and 10. Check the Beavers' lineup for you. Malone is the only running back. They have Montagna, Bynum, as the wide receivers, they go double tight end with Ross and Heller. Malone lined up behind Wilhelm. Second down and 10 from the 34. Wilhelm retreats to pass. Four rush for Grambling. Steps up in the pocket all day. Finally guns it and is dropped by Heller out at the 39-yard line. Incomplete. Good job by the offensive line that time protection-wise for Eric, who finally steps up in the pocket and drills the ball right in Heller's lap, but Ron dropped it, incomplete, and it'll be third down and 10, Oregon State. So the Beavers receive great field position to start the second half, but unable to do anything with it, at least as of yet. 14-43 remaining in the third quarter. Beavers down 14-3. Send Adams wide to the left, bind him out to the right. Take the tight ends, both of them out of the ball game. Now go back to twin running backs and three wide receivers. Wilhelm to throw. Six rush for Grambling as they blitz. Don't get there. The pass caught by him. Off a tackle. 45-50. Head down into Grambling territory to the 48. At a first down. And we'll check on Reggie's catches for the night. That is number five. Fifth reception for Bynum tonight. 33rd reception on the season. And the Beavers get their third first down as Reggie takes it to the Grambling 47-yard line. Good catch and then a Fine run after the catch to get the first down yardage. Beavers bring Montagna and Bynum, the two wide receivers out left to the formation. Sideline right, running room left, giving them alone on a, a little counter back. Hits to the 45 and ahead to the 43. Good gainer with Doug Wright and Jack Lester leading the blocking ahead. And the gain is for four down to the 43-yard line. Finally, we get the halftime stats. First downs, Grambling 13, Oregon State 3. Rushing 60 yards for Grambling, nine only for Oregon State, nine yards. Passing, Grambling 120, Oregon State with 76. Wilhelm was 9 of 15 with two interceptions. Landry for Grambling was 10 out of 26, four interceptions. Total offense, 180 for Grambling and 85 for Oregon State. Those are the halftime figures. Bynum in motion again back through the formation to the wide side. They go to the draw to Malone. It opens up. 45 cutting outside. 40 got a block. It's still on his feet. 35 and down to the 32 with a pretty run. Darvin Malone well blocked on the left side of that beaver line with Lester, Brills, and Emmons. And they gain all the way to the Grambling 32 for a first down, second first down on this drive, and fourth first down of the game for the Beavers. So, Oregon State on the move now with their first possession of the second half, driving in grambling territory at the 32-yard line. First down and 10, 13, 22 left in the quarter. Go to a slot left formation. Montana lines up inside Adams. 
Lane returns it running back to go with Malone. Montagna in motion back left to right. Grambling comes offside. I think the Beavers move too early. Wilhelm on a keeper ahead for a yard to the 32, and that's it. Play broke down immediately for Oregon State. I think the Beavers are going to get the penalty. Grambling came offside, but I think... I'm just guessing, but I think the Beavers may have moved. Now let's see what the officials say. Grambling's moving backwards, so maybe we're going to get a break here and have a five-yard offside Grambling. That will be the case. Five yards offside Grambling. So it'll take the football from the 32 down to the 27, and the Beavers will look at first down and five. Help Safeway support the Oregon State University Athletic Funds for men's and women's sports. Football fever is here through September. Look for the football fever emblem on many products throughout Safeway. And for everyone sold, a donation will be made to the OSU Athletic Department. Join with Safeway today. First and five, Beavers at the 27-yard line. Bynum and Adams out to the left of the formation. Again, Grambling comes offside. Beavers move. Play breaks down. Officials finally blow the play dead, and we'll see what they call here. Same situation with Grambling coming offside, and I think they're going to be assessed again. Wilhelm is obviously changing his cadence or signal count at the line of scrimmage, and Grambling over-anxious, jumping around. This is procedures, what it's called officially. It's five yards against Grambling, so the Beavers get another first down without running a play. Two consecutive five-yard penalties against Grambling. Third first down for Oregon State on the drive. And the fifth first down of the game for the Beavers. The Grambling Tigers had 13 first downs back in that first half, and they've not had the football yet in the second half. First down at the 22-yard line, just shy of the 22. Go to the power sweep with Lane. Needs a block, needs help. Trying to turn the corner. He can't. Gets to the line of scrimmage and ahead for maybe a yard to the 21-yard line. Out front, Dave Giacomelli gave him one block, but it was played very well by Grambling. The big defensive end, Brendel Hopkins, gets there for the tackle along with that linebacker that Jim talked about earlier, Joseph Williams holding the game to one, second down to nine. 12-12, clock running, left to go third quarter. Grambling 14-3, Beavers deep in Tiger territory at the 21-yard line, a second down to nine call. Back to pass, Wilhelm. Looking, has all day to throw it. Now winds up and guns into a pack. Incomplete. Eller had his hands on it down at the 13-yard line. Incomplete. And Bynum was all alone in the end zone for Oregon State. But Wilhelm did not see him. Eller couldn't hold it. And he's shaken up a little bit, a little dizzy as he gets up on his feet. And I think Bynum was probably behind a cluster of players. And Wilhelm just couldn't see him. But he was wide open in the end of the end zone. Let's see if they go back to that pattern. Now, third down and nine for Oregon State at the Grambling 21. Again, credit to Oregon State's offensive line. They gave Wilhelm all day to throw the football. Montana to the right, Bynum out to the left as the wide receivers. 3-4 on the pattern. Now make it five on the pattern. Wilhelm guns it over the middle, intercepted. Thrown short to Bynum, intercepted by the free safety Goins. Return to the 15, out to the 20, and to the 23. First down, Grambling at their own 23-yard line. Tried to throw a deep post to Reggie Bynum. Thrown short, underthrown, and Robert Goins, the free safety, picks it off for Grambling as Wilhelm has thrown his third intercept of the night, and it's Grambling football. Coach Robinson that time was telling his safeties to get back, get back, get towards the end zone, because he could see that pass coming as well. And uh, Eric, Eric put it up, and the Grambling guy came down with it. Underthrown that time, and Goins is right there to pick it off. First down, Grambling, 11.45 in the quarter. So the Beavers march deep in Grambling territory, only to have Wilhelm throw the intercept. Here's Hill on the run, hit at the line of scrimmage, and dropped hard. Good play by Jeff Schneider, the middle linebacker for the Beavers. Gets him at the line of scrimmage. They may give him progress of a yard. Nope, it'll be right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second down and 10. And we'll remind you, Smith's Home Furnishings reminds you to kick off great savings at all Smith's Home Furnishing stores. Smith's throwing great values your way with complete home furnishings for every room of your home. Smith's Home Furnishings with great quality and great prices. Phil Alfieri was uh, Phil Alfieri was injured in late in the first half, but he's back out there, so apparently he's all right. We were afraid he might not be back, but he is there. That's good news. Second down and 10. Here's Lance Landry, one naked bootleg back to the left, being chased. Haggerty misses, going to run 25, 30, out of bounds. 32-yard line. They'll give him across the 32. That's a bad spot of the football. He went out. He didn't make the 32, but the officials are going to give him the 33, and that puts it very close to first down yardage. And will bring up third down, and, well, it'll be less than a yard. Third down and less than a yard. I know at times it probably sounds like we're... Doing a little crying here tonight. 
but we are trying to report the facts. And the foot that I saw go out of bounds went out before the 32-yard line on the play. Third down, less than a yard, just shy of the 33. Go to a double wing set, pitch it to Dyson, and he's nailed for a loss back at his own 30-yard line. A great penetration by Haggerty and Ose Lewis, the linebacker. Rich Haggerty and Ose Lewis with a big defensive play, and it'll be fourth down and punt time. And the Beavers that time just simply overpowered the offensive line of Grambling. They just ran right over the top of them. A great defensive stand for the defense. Robert Adams, single deep, back inside his 30 as Robert Williams gets ready to punt the football for Grambling. He stands at his own 16 and will kick it from around the 20, 21, 22-yard line. Low snap, gets it, not much of a rush, and here's the kick, high and short. Adams, fair catch at his 40. Let's go to a timeout. Timeout with a score. Grambling 14, Oregon State 3. winds up calling an official timeout on this play, so they'll have two timeouts remaining in the second half. The Beavers are full complement of three. If you may have just happened to join us, here's what's happened. Back in the first quarter, Grambling scored late in the first quarter on a nine-yard run by halfback Wayne Hill to go in front 7-0. Then in the second period, Terrell Landry threw to Wayne Hill, 20 yards, touchdown, Grambling 14-0. Last play of the first half, Jim Nielsen, a 54-yard field goal for Oregon State, 14-3 halftime score. Beavers drove deep in Grambling territory, but then the interception foiled the play. Here's the handoff on a draw play to Malone. They had to cross the 40, and Darvin gets out to the 45. And five-yard run on the draw play for Darvin. Beavers had penetrated, had a first down at Grambling's 22-yard line before the attack finally stuttered, wound up at a third down situation, and then the pass to Bynum at the five was underthrown and picked off by Robert Goins, and so that spoiled that. Yeah, the Oregon State coaches told us coming in they thought the strength of this Grambling defense were the linebackers, and boy, they really are. Great quickness. Here's Wilhelm to pass for Rush. They rush him out of the pocket. In trouble. Throws outside. Got Malone on a short gainer out to the 49. And head down. Malone gets to the 50 and across. Great play by Darvin. Hit by the middle linebacker, Fred Collins, at the his own 49. But put the head down and drove Collins backward a couple of yards to pick up a first down for Oregon State. That's their fourth first down of this half. They had only two at halftime. First down to the Grambling 49. 9.37 to go in the third quarter. Trailing 14-3. Three, the Beavers have to be thinking big play. Center of the field, first down, do something. Bynum wide to the left, or make that wide to the right. They'll bring Adams wide to the left. Stay with Lane and Malone, the running backs. And here's Wilhelm to throw with time again. Dumps it out to the back. Flags are down. The pass is caught to, by Carl Lane at the 45 of Grambling. But there's a flag down in Oregon State's backfield, and that is holding. Illegal use of hand, or holding. Illegal use of hands, technically the five-yard penalty. This is going to be the 10-yard variety on Oregon State. They caught one of the linemen. So they'll bring it back and nullify a four-yard gain and put Oregon State back into that all-too-familiar position of first down and 15 or 20 or in a couple of cases back in the first half. It was first down and 25. This will be first and 20 as they mark it back to the Beavers' 41-yard line. Well, they're going to mark it even further than that. <laughs> Boy, the spotting of the ball tonight has been not real terrific. This is a 12-yard penalty from the 49 back to the Beaver 39-yard yeah. line. Now, yeah, and, and Jim Pollard, the assistant coach, is showing the official that he made a mistake, a two-yard mistake. Let's see if they correct it. 
Well, the discussion's on by the officials. Now Dave Cragthorpe is three steps out onto the field across the way, and they now they're going to move, move the, the football up. They have moved the yeah, ball. It was going to be a 12-yard penalty, but <laughs> Beaver coaches obviously caught that quickly. Now Oregon State will re-huddle as the officials get the ball placed correctly at the Oregon State 41-yard line, and it'll be first down and 20 at that point. It has been <laughs> an interesting evening, to say the least. <laughs> Coming to the nine-minute mark, left in the third quarter with Grambling leading 14-3. to Heller, the tight end, flexes out. Back to pass, five of the pattern. Wilhelm dumps it. Very bad pass through that one into the turf in front of Malone who did a deep curl at the 47-48 yard line, incomplete. Had no chance to come back for the football, and it'll be second down and 20, as we remind you. Get set for winter. Oh, no, already? And everything you need from G.I. Joe's and Portland area listeners, watch this Wednesday for the special grand opening celebration of G.I. Joe's new Tualatin store off I-5 at the Durham exit. Second down and 20. Beavers backed up to their own 41-yard line following the holding penalty, then the incompletion. Fake the run, fake the sweep to Lane. Wilhelm going to throw back to the near side of the tight end. Heller got a block, 45, turns ahead, 50, running hard, 46-yard line. Good gainer. Good play. The Beavers really set that up well. They send everybody to the right of the formation, and they show power sweep with Carl Lane carrying. Wilhelm fakes to him and then throws back to the weak side of the formation to the tight end. Heller on a little tight end screen, Lester and Jacob Melly from the line go out to lead the blocking and Heller gets big yardage to the Grambling 46 where the Beavers will now look at third down and seven. Oregon State's passing success has really been to the tight end tonight. We're starting to see that tight end develop more and more as we were told when the season started we would. Here's third down and seven at the Grambling 46 yard line. No tight end in there now. Three wide receivers set with the twin running backs. Here comes the blitz by Grambling. And Wilhelm's not going to get away from it. And he is going to be just buried back around the 42-yard line. And right on top of him is Marvin Ayers, a 6'6", 250-pound junior from Dallas, Texas. Grambling comes with a blitz on third down. And Wilhelm tried to roll away from it but couldn't do so. Ayers catches him from behind and dumps him hard at the 42. And it's fourth down. And punt time again for Oregon State at the 7-4. 44 mark left in this third quarter, and Glenn Pena is in to punt the ball. Now, the last time he kicked very well. He had a long, long punt, 50, 51 yards last time. Here's a good high spiraling kick by Pena. Waiting, take it at the 13-yard line, return to the 15, out to the 20, and that's going to be all. 21, give him an 8-yard return after a very good punt by Glenn Pena. On the return this time... Well, <laughs> come on, Daryl. It's Kevin DeSet again. They've been shuttling people so many times back then, that punt return situation. This is Kevin DeSet, whose return is to the 21, and that's where Grambling will start. First down, Tigers at their own 21 with 724 left to go in the third quarter, and Grambling leading 14 to 3. So now Oregon State's defense has to step it again and try to get the football back. Go to a wing right formation. They give it to the wing coming to the near side. It's McFarland. Broke a tackle, 25, and squirms all the way out to the 30 for a nine-yard gain. Good run by McFarland. Played quite a bit in that second quarter for Marvin Thomas. McFarland is 5'9", 163, and a senior from Waterproof, Louisiana. The Beavers have an injured player, and while they look at the injured player, let's go to a timeout. Timeout of the field score. Grambling, 14, Oregon State, 3. Scott Monson shaken up a little bit for the Beavers. Leaves the field now under his own power to the far side. Grambling also had a player shaken up. 
it will be a second down and one situation for Grambling at their own 30-yard line. They keep McFarlane in as a wing back and set him wing right. Here's the handoff straight ahead. Dyson, and he breaks through out to the 34-yard line on a well-blocked play that time, leading the blocking. Dwayne Richard, who's in there playing at an offensive guard spot, gain of four for Grambling to the 34, and that's the first first down of the night, or first first down, of course, of the second half for Grambling, and that's their 14th first down of the night. They'll have running room left sideline right with the ball of the near side hash mark moving left to right with 8.49 and counting left in the third now, and Grambling holding on to that 14-3 to lead. McFarlane wing right goes in motion. They give the ball to Dyson on a straight hitter. And oh, St. Louis plugs the hole and makes a great hit from his linebacker position. Down goes McFarlane at the 35. It's a gain of one only. Good play by Ose Lewis. Tucson, Arizona, his hometown, three-year Letterman senior. It will be a second down and nine situation. Remember, Beaver Huddles next week, Monday noon, Corvallis at Nendell's, Wednesday noon, Salem at the other place, Restaurant on Mission Street, Thursday noon, Portland at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Here's Landry retreating to pass with time. Winds up, guns it over the middle, incomplete. He threw the ball into the turf. He was attempting to hit Wayne Hill, the running back out of the backfield, on a little uh, down and out pattern at the 40 yard line, but threw it into the turf at Hill's feet, incomplete, and it'll be third down and nine. So now the Beavers have a chance if they could stop this play or at least hold it under a nine-yard gain to force Grambling back into a punt situation. The clock stops with 6.01 left in the third quarter. Beavers will return home via charter to Eugene, by the way, immediately following tonight's game. And I'll get an approximate time for you on that for those of you who will be meeting the plane. Here's Landry to pass. Here comes the rush. He winds up and guns it downfield. Receiver falls down, and it's almost intercepted by Lopez. Incomplete all the way down to the Grambling 33. It was intended for... That wing back again, John McFarland, underthrown a little bit. McFarland tried to stop. He slipped down, and Lopez wound up, wound up being the closest to the football, but he couldn't quite get there in time. It's incomplete. Fourth down and punt time again now for Grambling. And the play was very well defended by Oregon State. Boy, could use a big punt return here as Adams stands back at his 25. Williams, eight on the line of scrimmage for the Beavers this time. They are coming all out rush, this, and Williams gets it off. It'll be high and very short. Up comes Adams, fair catch at his own 40. So another very short punt by Robert Williams. This one only traveling 25 yards, and the Beavers wind up with very good field position at their own 40. As we remind you, the Air Express brought to you throughout the season by True Value Hardware. The more you've got to do, the more you need True Value Hardware stores because they've got what it takes. 5.45 left to go in the third quarter. Halftime score remains intact, 14-3 to three Grambling. As the Beavers go on offense, this is their third possession of the second half. Wilhelm back to throw immediately. Steps up in the pocket, winds up, guns outside. Montagna's got it inside the 50 to the 49 of Grambling. That'll be first down. Nice comeback pattern that time by Dave Montagna, who faked going long on the fly pattern and then did kind of a, well, what we used to call the old button hook or a little curl pattern. It's referred to these days. And Montagna gets 11 out of it and a first down for Oregon State at the Grambling 49. That's a Beaver's fifth first down this half. Seventh first down in the game. 14-3 Grambling as the Beavers again for the third time this half in Grambling territory. Twin running backs for Oregon State. They give the ball straight ahead to Lane. Hits inside the 47 and gets near the 46-yard line. Emmons and Lester were out in front leading the blocking on that play. And Carl Lane's gain will be just shy of the 46. Give him three, and it'll be second and seven. Grambling has been able to take away the, certainly the long passing game of Oregon State and seriously hampered the short passing game. So the Beavers are trying to establish some kind of a run to take the pressure off the pass, and they've just not been able to do it. They're not having great success running that ball up the middle. Update third quarter now into the third quarter. Oklahoma leading Minnesota 10 to nothing. Wilhelm to pass, hit in the backfield, breaks away, goes ahead to the 45 and scrambles ahead to the Grambling 43. So he turns in what appeared to be a loss into a gain down to the Grambling 43-yard line. And the Beavers will have third down and four at that point. Good pressure again by Grambling, though. They were really coming. And Wilhelm 
barely avoided the sack and gets ahead for yardage to the Grambling 43-yard line. Beavers desperately could use a touchdown soon. Down by 11, 14 to 3. Adams wide to the right, Montagna out to the left. Lane and Malone, they've gone all the way at the running backs. Heller back in at tight end. Back to pass comes uh, Wilhelm. They roll him out of the pocket. He's in big trouble. Now winds up and throws the ball away into the Oregon State bench across the way. And he obviously just threw that one away as there was big pressure. And Wilhelm gets into it a little bit with a couple of the grambling players. And Coach Dave Cragthorpe grabs his quarterback. It was really more of a argument type thing rather than a pushing match or anything. Wilhelm looking down at the turf. He's all right. And we did, did we get a flag or not? We have a big discussion, but no penalty flag. There is no penalty on the play, so it'll be fourth down. And the Beavers are going to have to punt the football. Updating from the south, here's a final. Florida State, after trailing the entire game, that's one of the top ten teams, came on and beat Kansas late, 24-20 to was that final. Florida has won. They beat Mississippi State, 36-22. Also tonight, Mississippi leading Tulane in the fourth, 20-10. to More scores in a moment. Here's the punt by Pena. Good high punt. Looks like it'll reach the end zone, and it will. About five yards deep. Timeout on the field. Score from Shreveport. Grambling 14, Oregon State 3. First down play, the handoff goes to Wayne Hill. He's out for a couple of yards to the 22-yard line. Second down, back to pass. Landry flips the ball out complete on the near side to Dyson to the 25, across to the 30, and he'll reach the 31-yard line before he's tackled, and that will be a first down for Grambling, and that is Grambling's second first down of this particular half. They had 13 at halftime, 15th first down of the game. They move the ball out to their own 31-yard line, again swinging Hill out of the backfield. That's the same play they scored on back in the second quarter. Lamar has gone ahead of Rice, end of 3-21-17. SMU really putting it on TCU. They're in the fourth, 42-14 now, SMU. Give it to Hill, and he is smashed down. Good defensive play by Paul Saunders, first of all, and then Harold Johnson, the linebacker, gets there and knocks everybody down. Blocker, ball carrier, everything. Gain is a yard to the 32, second down to nine. Beavers, for the most part, have defended the run very well tonight. And overall, have played good defense throughout the game. Not enough offense has been the problem. Second down to nine, grambling with sideline right and running room left. Kevin Roy wide to the left, Marvin Thomas out to the right and back to pass. Here, flipping the ball out, caught by Dyson. And oh, is he upended by Jamie Norman, who's in there on the nickel defense at the 32, no gain. He really cartwheeled him up in the air and around and out at the 32. Great play by Norman who got right down around the ankles and sent Dyson flying through the air. No gain, third down and nine for Grambling at the 32. Good play by Jamie Norman who is a junior from Barstow, California. He and Galloway come in there on the when the, in the situation when the Beavers go to either five or six defensive backs. Third down and nine, and Landry to pass. Here comes the rush. Now is time. The ball is deflected, but it's caught anyway by Roy at the 40, and he turns around two Beavers at the 45 and gets a first down. Caught it at the 40. That was shy, but then he outran Johnson and Ose Lewis, and finally Paul Saunders gets there to push him out of bounds at the 46, and Grambling's third first down of the half and 16th of the game. Final, Texas A&M, 45 Tulsa, 10 tonight. 
Houston has won big over Louisville, 49-27. Earlier, Baylor beat Texas Tech, 31 to nothing. Arkansas romping against New Mexico State tonight after 3, 45 to 10. We told you Mississippi, 22 lane, 10 into 3. Florida State beat Kansas, 24 to 20. And at least for the most part, you're up to date on the scores with us. If there's one or two more, and we'll get those in in just a second. First down, Grambling. Out at their own, just shy of the 48. Here's Landry to pass on first down with time. Guns it out near side. Nice diving catch at the 46-yard line by tight end. It is not Williams this time, but Arthur Wells, who has played some, but not all that much tonight. They've pretty much gone with Robert Williams and Kevin Roy all night. Arthur Wells is a 257-pound one-year letterman sophomore from Mansfield, Louisiana. Gain to the 46 of six, and it'll be second down and four. Second quarter, Air Force 14, New Mexico 3. Second quarter, Utah 31, UTEP nothing. Those scores from the West. Here's Landry back to pass. Now rushed out of the pocket. Johnson on pursuit, trying to get him. Didn't. 45, runs ahead of the 40, and ducks out of bounds. As Jamie Norman got over there in hot pursuit, Landry just stepped out of bounds at the 40-yard line and picks up a first down. Johnson had a chance on him, but Landry wound up just running away from him. And another grambling first down. This one takes it down to the Oregon State 40. So all of a sudden, now the Tigers are moving the ball. They're doing very well offensively. Oregon State, again, having to worry about that run situation, committing a lot of people along the front line. That last time as the ball carrier went out of bounds, he slipped and fell, and down he went and took the Oregon State doctor with him. Oh, did he? I yes, didn't, sir. I didn't see Crammed that. him right under a bench over there. Oh, no. First down of 10, Grambling at the 40. Far side hash mark. Jim Nielsen's over there making sure everything's all right, though. That's the right. doctors are all laughing about it. Landry to throw. Guns it intercepted. Saunders at the 30. Return to the 35. Trying to get outside of Kidd. He's ankle down at the 37. But it's Beaver football. And that, for Oregon State tonight, is interception 4-5, Hal. It is the fourth interception for the Beavers tonight. And Saunders first on the year. And the Beavers 12th as a team. And Phil Alfieri is shaken up again. And down on the field across the way. So they'll take a look at him as the Beavers will go back on offense. First down at their own 38-yard line. This is the first semblance of any drive by Grambling since way back probably midway in the second quarter. But the interception turns it around. And Oregon State tonight, uh, we've talked about it all the way along, been able to come up with some breaks. They've been able to get the uh, football on fumbles and interceptions, but not able to make the big play themselves. And that's what's really hurt, and that is what everybody here seems to think is going to have to happen to get Oregon State's offense in gear. Somebody's going to have to make a big play. Let's hope it was Saunders' interception that will fire up the offense so that they can put a drive together and get in the end zone with 43 seconds to go in the third quarter and trailing 14-3. to three. Time, certainly there's time left, but time becoming a concern, I'm sure, to the coaching staff. Let's check with Hal on the interceptions tonight. It's been Northington, Saunders, Schneider, and Curitan with the intercepts. Wilhelm on a draw, big hole. It's Carl Lane carrying it, and he fumbles the ball as he crosses the 40 out to the 43-yard line, but Beavers will get it. Lane fumbled it, but on the football at the 43-yard line, the Beavers will gain five yards out of it. It's Brills, I think. Yeah, Derek Brills, who covers the football for Oregon State. So good play by the junior offensive guard from Panola, California. Beavers retain possession and gain five on the play out to their own 43-yard line. Almost right in front of their bench now on the far side hash mark with sideline right and running room left. Back to pass, Wilhelm after a fake to the tailback. Now winds up and guns over the middle, incomplete. And boy, into triple coverage that time, intended for Bynum on a slant over the middle at the Grambling 45. And I'll tell you, Reggie's really attracting some folks. And the Beavers have another injured player now that they're going to have to look at. And also Bynum is shaken up a little bit downfield for Oregon State. So the Beavers have two injured players. Is Wilhelm the other one in the backfield? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, that is also the final play of the third quarter. So while we check out the injuries, let's turn it back to you, Station. End of the third quarter from Shreveport, Louisiana, with the score, Grambling 14 and Oregon State 3.
Let's go back and recap the play, first of all, for you. Wilhelm went back to pass under heavy pressure, trying to throw into really what amounted to triple coverage to Reggie Bynum. He took a hit just as the ball arrived. Then Wilhelm took a hit as he released the ball. Pass was knocked down incomplete. Bynum is up and off to the sidelines, and he limped, uh, well, I don't know if I should use the word, a slight limp, put it that way. Uh, I don't think it's going to be anything uh, of any kind of major variety at all with Reggie. Now, Wilhelm has been down all this time. They have just gotten him up, and they're going to uh, take him to the far side of the field. Now, it was very hard... Jim, could you determine whether they were looking ankle or knee on the play? No, I can't really tell. And it, it appeared uh, when he first went down and the trainers first went out there, like they were working right below the knee, but I'm not sure. And they have taken him off on the sidelines over there, and it, it's... Uh, it's either knee or ankle. That's as far as I think we better go at this point. Okay, but very good, right. Either way, it's going to hurt Oregon State. All right, here's Rich Gonzalez for his first play now. He's a freshman from Diamond Bar, California, 6'1", 186. Thrown into the heat of the battle to start the fourth quarter, and he comes in on a third and five situation. And Grambling breaks offside. The ball was never snapped, but we had motion everywhere. Beavers started too early, and that's what happened so Jack, often. Yeah. Jack Lester, I think, got the cadence, or the new quarterback. Cadence confused him, and he started to snap the ball, moved it about a foot, and then put it back down, and that's what you can't do. No. Five-yard mark off against Oregon State will make it third down and ten. We start the final quarter with Grambling up 14-3. to three. They have Wilhelm on the bench across the way, Darrell. I think it is a knee that they're working on, but I can't really tell too well from here. But it looks to me like they are now checking out his right knee. There's a mass of people around him on the sidelines. All right, the Beavers break the huddle. Bynum is back in there, so Reggie's all right. He and Montagna go to the left of the formation. Heller is tight end to the right. Grambling comes offside, and I think Doug Wright started too early. Boy, I'll tell you what, Brendel Hopkins just let fly from his left defensive end position for Grambling and just blasted over the top of Doug Wright. And now the officials go into a big conference to see who this is on. Motion on Oregon State, I think. I think it's the same problem, Darrell. I think it's the new quarterback, and the cadence are different, and people are simply moving before the ball is snapped, yep. and it continues to be a problem for Oregon State. As uh, Darrell mentioned, this is the first snap for uh, for Rich Gonzalez, the freshman, and um, he is a... Oregon State coaches think a fine prospect, a great arm. That's what we've heard all along, is he can really throw the football. Tough way to... Obviously, he entered a football game, but that can't be helped because of the injury. Well, now they're moving the ball the other way. They, they probably... <laughs> Jim, would you like to explain to me I what the no officials idea. are doing? What is that? Oh, personal foul. Against Grambling. Against Grambling. Now, that must have occurred well after because we just get the sign of personal foul on Grambling. That moves the ball up to the 47, and it'll be third down and one, and Oregon State wants timeout. Thank you. I want a timeout myself. <laughs> timeout from Shreveport with a score. Grambling, 14, and Oregon State, three.
Dead ball foul, 15-yard penalty again on Grambling, so it's third down and one. They give it to Malone, got off one tackle, drives ahead, and I'll tell you what, on individual effort alone, he gets a first down out to the 49-yard line before Jeffrey Smith, along with Joseph Williams, make the tackle. But they had Malone stopped at the line of scrimmage. Darwin just simply refused to go down and gets first down yardage on his own. That's the sixth first down of the second half, eighth first down overall for Oregon State. Grambling is 17 first downs for this half. First down, Beavers out at their own 49 with Rich Gonzalez at quarterback now early in the fourth quarter. Hand off by Gonzalez, second man. Malone trips, still going, 45, breaks into the secondary and rolls down to the 40-yard line of Grambling. Nice run again by Darvin. He's inside the 40 to the 39, and that will be a first down. 11-yard pickup by Darvin Malone and first down yardage. Darvin was hit pretty good, Darrell, after he got about five yards across that line of scrimmage, but kept his feet and his balance and picked up some more yardage. A good run. Let's see now if the running game becomes so much more important since they had to go with a new quarterback. Oregon State has not yet put the ball in the air with Gonzalez in there. And I think that's very wise. Let Gonzalez get a few plays handing off before they ask him to throw it. Hand off Malone. Big hole. 35 and drives ahead down to the 31-yard line. Nice run again by Darvin with Lester and Derek Brills this time downfield leading the blocking. Good gainer of eight, and it'll be second and two at the Grambling 31. And the Beavers now just going to the power game after losing their freshman starting quarterback, Eric Wilhelm, to injury on the final play of the third quarter. Wilhelm is still on the bench across the way. He's lying down. He has ice on that knee. Second down and two at the Grambling 31-yard line. Beavers moving left to right. Gonzalez gives. Here's the power sweep near side with Jordan, who's in. Gets to the 30, and boy, he just flattened. Jeffrey Smith up from the corner to make the tackle. He falls forward to near the 29 and close to first down, but I think will come up maybe just short. Doug Wright's down in the secondary. Threw a good block, a little bit slow getting up, but says he's all right. And they're going to bring the chains out now and the downs markers and measure to see if indeed this was a first down on the second down running play. Good blocking also by the tight end, Ron Heller, who put a good hit on one of the, the uh, Grambling Tigers who was trying to come up behind the play and make the tackle, but Heller lowered him out there. Heller at 6'3", 230, a three-year letterman senior, and of course a former linebacker. Pretty tough young man out there. He's having a good night tonight. He caught a couple of passes, and he's run well with the football after he's caught it. I'm glad you bring that up because, of course, we talked about the fact that Heller did not have a good night against Fresno State a week ago. It is a first down when Ron had uh, dropped some passes, etc. His forte probably, though, is blocking. He's always, he is a good blocking tight end. Beavers get their ninth first down, seventh first down here in the second half, and have advanced the football by the running game to the Grambling 29-yard line. Trail 14-3 to with 13-13 left to go in the football game. Bynum and Montana wide to the left, back to the running game. Big hold, Malone, 25, secondary, 20, and all the way to the 18. Fumbled after the whistle, after he was down. He'll get inside the 18-yard line, and another first down is Darvin. I'll tell you what they're doing, Jim. They're just running right over the top of Derek Brills and Jack Lester, and they're really opening holes. They really are, and they're giving uh, Grambling, they're giving them the look of the receivers, the wide receivers, the two out on one side, and pass. In fact, we can hear the Grambling assistant coaches in the booth next to us. That time they were yelling, throw, throw, throw. But they didn't throw. They ran it. They're doing a good job. All right, another first down at the 17-yard line as Malone gets 12 on that run, and the Beavers get their eighth first down of the second half. We still have 12.42 to go. At the 17, Hiller tied into the right. They faked him alone this time, and they want to throw the ball. Gonzalez back, winds up, guns to right. Oh, it's dropped. It was almost intercepted by Grambling. Gonzalez threw to the wrong receiver, number one. It wound up going towards Adams, but it was thrown right in the hands of cornerback Kevin Jackson, and he was so surprised, he just flat dropped the ball. Gonzalez threw to the wrong receiver. He should have thrown to the back coming out. It was open. Really a difficult position to put Gonzalez in, though, having to yeah. throw that football when you're down that close to the goal line, especially throw at the distance. He had to throw that 35 or 40 yards, and they ought to go back to something a little shorter if they're going to try to throw the football, give him a chance to build his confidence a little bit. Second down and 10 now. Line of scrimmage to the 17-yard line on the near side of the field with running room left, sideline right. Back to pass. Gonzalez gives on a draw to Malone. Gets out of his own backfield. Needs to try to turn the corner, but he's not going to be able to do so. And down he goes at the 19-yard line. And a good defensive play by James Harris, the linebacker, two-year letterman senior from Monroe, Louisiana. It was plugged up the middle. 
So Malone turned to the outside, but the, the one thing you can't do against Grambling is outrun them on the flanks. And Harris gets Malone down for a loss of two. And now, all of a sudden, the Beavers are back in that familiar position again, a third and long situation, third down and 12 in this instance at the 19. Bring the receivers out to right of the formation. The wide side of the field, Adams and Bynum. Heller tight end to the left. Gonzalez fakes, gives the ball to Malone. They run together. That spoils the play can, uh, immediately. And down goes Malone for a loss of one at the 20. Quarterback and fullback misconnections had run right into each other. And then Malone wound up really giving Gonzalez a pop. It'll be fourth down, and Nielsen's coming on. It's right in, in the middle of the field. So the Beavers will go for the field goal here and try to get some points on the board. 11.23 left to go in the fourth and final quarter. As Montagna into hold, Nielsen kicked the 54-yarder early. This he's trying for his 15th consecutive field goal. From the 27, meets to go 37. No angle, straight on. It's down. The kick is on the way. Good distance by Jim. Up and good. Nielsen nails it. We have timeout from Shreveport with 11.04 left to go. And the score now. Grambling 14 and Oregon State 6. Jet returning the kickoff in zone 5, 10, 15, 20. He breaks out to the 25 and is all the way out to the 27 yard line where Craig Galloway makes the tackle downfield. They'll give him to the 28 yard line. Long return, took it from about five yards deep in the end zone, returns for 33, and Grambling goes on offense, first down and 10 at their own 28. Jim? Well, Eric Wilhelm is across the way. He's out of his pads. He's on uh, crutches. He has his leg in a brace, and you, you don't know how serious the injury is. That could all be precautionary other than the fact that he did get popped pretty good, so we're going to have to wait and see before we know what the situation is. He's not leaving the field. He's staying on the sideline. Here comes the wing back around of the reverse. McFarland in big trouble and down. Jose Lewis again makes a fine play back at the 25 with Haggerty and Harold Johnson in hot pursuit also and helping out on the tackle. The loss will be a couple back to the 25 and it'll be second down and 12 yards to go. Klein with good penetration up front for the Beavers to help on that situation. Also Andre Todd who lined up on the same side of the ball with Bob Klein. Second down and 12. Good defensive play. 10-25 to go. Grambling 14. Oregon State 6. Tigers break the huddle. John McFarlane, way out to the wide, wide to the right as a wide receiver, back to pass. Here comes the rush on Landry, lost a football, big scramble. Beavers got the ball back at the 18. Gino Mingo makes the recovery, and the Beavers get a big break in this football game as they knock it loose from the quarterback, Terrell Landry, who was trying to step up in the pocket, avoid the rush, and one of the Beaver linemen, and there were three of them bearing down on Landry, got a hand in and popped the ball loose from Landry, who loses it. Mingo recovers, and the Beavers are first down at the Grambling 19 with 10.07 to go. We talked about we needed a big play. Let's hope this is it. Trailing by eight, Oregon State might be able to tie. Up. Gonzalez could just hit a pass, like an end zone type pass. It would help him enormously, too, besides helping the football team. And if the guy catches in a white shirt, that'll really help. <laughs> Eller, tight end of the right. Gonzalez gives on a quick trap to Lane. Is stood up, but drives ahead to the 17 and may have reached the 16. In fact, they'll give him the 16, so it'll be a gain of three, and it'll be second down and seven. Beaver's going to do a lot of quick stuff up the middle now with the dives, the traps, etc. Had uh, success doing that on their last drive, which finally was culminated by uh, Jim Nielsen's field goal of 37 yards. Second down and seven now at the Grambling 16. Ball of the near side hash mark. 9.39 to go. Grambling up eight as the Beavers threaten here following Gino Mingo's fumble recovery. 
Bynum and Montagna far to the left side. Back comes Gonzalez. Here comes the blitz on. He winds up. Guns to Bynum too high, but he made a great catch at the 10 and is thrown backward. He'll be about one yard shy of first down. Boy, that was pure vintage Reggie Bynum on that one as Gonzalez wound up throwing the ball behind Bynum to the wrong side. And Reggie just turned around and one-handed it on the catch as he was being hit. What a receiver this Reggie Bynum is. And what a year he is having. Six catches, 42 yards, no touchdowns as yet, but that was a great catch. That's as good as we've seen him make this year. Third down and more than a yard because the nose of the football is not touching the 10-yard line. It's between the 10 and 11. So third down, more than a yard. Here's Gonzalez, bootleg. He's in big trouble at the 15. He gets to the 13 and out of bounds at the 12 and loses. I'm not sure if that's a design play or a broken play. Everybody came to the right. Gonzalez bootlegging back to the left, uh, the left, and maybe it was by design, but Grambling did not go for the fake at all, and Gonzalez loses to the 12, and now the Beavers will have fourth down and three. What do you do here, Coach? I th well, I don't know. We'll let, we'll let the head coach is paid to make these decisions, That's so we'll right. let him make, let him do it. Heck with it. He did not put his field goal kicker in as yet, however. Here's the paid attendance, and it's not going to set any world records, James. Gee, is that right? I can't believe that. That really looks low. Yeah, I don't know. That's 13,396. Looks like more than that, but then never seen this house before. Don't know how many. We've got a timeout, and I'm not sure whether this is just an official timeout or whether it's a team-assessed timeout. So let's don't take any chances here. We'll keep it here. It'll be fourth down and three for the Beavers at the Grambling 12-yard line, Jim. And let's go back and talk a little bit about Eric Wilhelm, who got hurt on the last play of the third quarter. Eric is on the sideline. He is on crutches. He has what this does is it cuts the eight-point deficit down to five. So if you do score a touchdown, you're automatically ahead. If the Beavers were to score a touchdown... Now, say on this play, they would still have to complete a two-point conversion to tie. So Nielsen's going to go for the field goal. And he is uh, virtually automatic from this range. Should the snap be okay and things like that, obviously. The line of scrimmage is the 12. He'll have an angle to the right. The kick will come from the 19-yard line. So it'll be of a 20-yard, 29-yard variety. And that will be by far his shortest effort of the evening. He's two for two tonight. He is kicked at the 25-yard line. Break out, and here we go. Dave Montagna does the holding at the 20-yard line. He's done a great job of that all year long, as Jim Nielsen has talked about on a number of occasions. They'll kick it from the 20, so it's a 30-yarder. It's down. It's kicked, and it's blocked off to the right, and that'll break Nielsen's streak as it goes out of the end zone. Somebody up front got through for Grambling, and it might have been James Polk, that big guy, 6'11", 340. He was there alongside another teammate, and both had their hands in the air, and I believe it was Polk that got the block, and Grambling will take over, first and 10 at the 20-yard 20 20 yard line, and that is a momentum crusher there. That really hurts the beat because Oregon State, as Darrell mentioned, with those three points, got right back into the football game with a touchdown. They could have won it. Now let's see if the defense can hold them or come up with the football again. SMU now leads TCU in the fourth, 56 to 14. You teach them to turn them in. Yeah. Lamar leads Rice in the fourth, 38 23. Texas AM beat Tulsa, 45 10. Houston beat. Louisville 49-27, handoff second man, Dyson line of scrimmage and falls. Lewis might have tripped him, Ose Lewis or Bob Klein gets out to the 24 for a four-yard gain, second down and six. Other scores from tonight, Arkansas 45, New Mexico State 13 late in the game. Mississippi has gone ahead of Tulane 27-10 in the fourth. Florida State beat Kansas 24-20. Florida beat Mississippi State 36-22. All of those scores from tonight. In the fourth now, good game in Minneapolis where Oklahoma leads Minnesota 13-7. to So Lou Holtz's team has stayed tough. Landry on a roll back, missed at the 15, comes ahead to the 20, 25, and rolled out of bounds at the 26. One of the Beavers missed him all the way back at the 15. It was Rich Haggerty, and that allowed Landry to turn the corner, get up the sideline, and finally knocked out of bounds at the 26 after a gain of a couple. Well, they mark it now back at the 25, so very little yardage on the game, and it'll be third down and five for Grambling. And again, the Beaver defense, as they've had to do so often tonight, needs to come up with a big third down play and give the offense yet another chance at the football. Third down and five. 
finals tonight. North Texas State 22, Kansas State 10. Here's Landry to pass. Swings it out of the back. Dyson got a 25-30. Running at the 35. Oh, he's got a first down as he crosses all the way out to the 37-yard line before Harold Johnson gets over to make the tackle at the 37-yard line. And Beavers might get assessed a face mask here too, huh, Jim? Yeah, I think that was the call. I think he grabbed him by the face mask as he went by. So that'll be the reason for the flag. Coach Cragthorpe's out on the field. He wants to talk to the officials again, but I think that's going to be the call. This will be Grambling's fifth first down of the half and their 18th first down of the game. <laughs> Head coach Cragthorpe is having to try to hide some of his assistants out there. The assistants are getting a bit vocal, I think, with the officiating, and so they're trying to keep peace along the sideline over there. Official still in a discussion, and in that discussion are Mike Lopez, Jeff Schneider, Ose Lewis. All gathered around. Lewis trying to hold off some of his teammates right now. It's going to be against Oregon State. And it will be personal foul against oh. Oregon State. Oh, let's mark 15 off rather than... See, face mask is only five unless you grab the face mask and try to uh, turn it from the front part of the helmet back around to the back part of the helmet. That's only a five-yard penalty. Personal foul is 15. Get much more yardage out of that that's one. That's right. Mark that baby down the field. And that's what they're doing right now. And this will move it all the way out to the 50-yard line. So this series for Grambling getting some help. It'll be marked at Oregon State's 49, and Grambling gets its fifth, fifth first down of the second half, 18th first down of the game. Okay, Grambling football on the far side hash mark at the Oregon State 49-yard line. Grambling go with a wing right formation, put him in motion, give it to the second man. Hill stumbles line of scrimmage. Boy, almost lost the football. Knee touches at the 50-yard line, and Harold Johnson is right on top of him to cover him up. It'll be a loss of one for Grambling. And I think the reason he stumbled, Andre Todd got great penetration that time and got in there and I think was able to get an arm or a hand on the running back and cause him to go down. So good play by Andre Todd, the senior from Pittsburgh, California, 6'3", 223, and he's a three-year letterman doing a good job at the defensive end situation tonight. Loss of one back to the 50 brings up second down at 11. To remind you, Beaver football brought to you by Blitz Weinhardt and its distributors, a part of the football fever fundraising program. Blitz will make a donation to the OSU Athletic Department for every case of Blitz and Blitz-like 12-pack can sold during September. Here's Landry to pass with a big rush. Winds up, guns outside, almost intercepted down to the 27-yard line, diving through the air as Levance Northington, but can't quite get there. And, oh, did the Beavers put heat on Landry that time, coming with the linebackers, and Todd and Lewis were right in Terrell Landry's face as he threw off his heels to the near side of the field, incomplete, and almost intercepted. It'll be third down, stops the clock, 6.51 to go. Last week, Oregon State had 11 penalties, 106 yards. This week, well, we've already eclipsed that record. We've got 12 for 139. I don't like the way these things are progressing onward each week, huh? <laughs> That's right. Third down and 11 right at the 50-yard line. Here's Landry straight back in the pocket. Here comes the rush. Winds up, throws outside. Drop by McFarland at the 36. Oh, the Beavers got a break there. They wind up with coverage with the linebacker, Harold Johnson, on McFarland, who's quicker. McFarland freed himself on a deep out pattern in front of the Beaver bench, and he just dropped the football. And it's fourth down and punt time for Grambling with Robert Williams to punt. Robert Adams single deep for the Beavers who could use a big play from their special teams here. They have 10 on the line of scrimmage. See if they come with the all-out rush now. They did last time. Good snap. They don't get there with the rush, and Williams kicks to the near side. Adams going to have to let it bounce. 20 laterally across, and now ahead to the 15, and we'll roll dead there. Time out on the field. Score. Grambling 14, Beavers 6.
Back to pass, Gonzalez throws over the middle, complete to Heller, who's out to the 20, 23 yard line and down. We have flags on the field, back of the Oregon State backfield. And here comes holding again against the Beavers. And for the umpteenth time, the Beavers have not only been penalized, but more importantly, I think, Jim, we should make the point, they've been penalized after a play that has gained fairly good yardage. That's happened a number of times. It really has hurt the Beavers, as Darrell says, killing the drives. Back to the seven on the penalty. Now Gonzalez to his end zone to throw, and he's oh. going to break the bomb. Way downfield, incomplete, as he throws <laughs> it all the way to the 50-yard line towards Dave Montagna. He just lined up left of the formation, ran a straight streak pattern down down the far sideline, and Gonzalez let her rip to the 50, but it's overthrown, incomplete. And it'll be second down and 17 for the Beavers, back at their own well, eight-yard line. It's between the seven and the eight-yard line. Safeway proud to salute the Oregon State Beavers. Safeway knows it's the spirit of fair play that makes athletes great. And in that spirit, you can know that Safeway works hard to offer honestly fair prices on a wide selection of quality foods. I don't know if we give you a station break. At eight, we'll do that right after this play. Back to pass. Big rush on. They'll get him for a safety. Gonzalez is down for a safety. Oh, what a rush by James Harris, the inside linebacker for Grambling. Harris is celebrating off of the near side. He made a great individual play. Give him credit. And he sacks quarterback Rich Gonzalez in the end zone. Two points for Grambling. And now Oregon State will have a free kick situation at the five. 56 mark of the fourth quarter. The safety pushes Grambling's lead now up to 16 to 6. 16 to 6 Grambling, and the Beavers will probably punt it from the 40. Let's go over the station break. You're listening to Grambling, Oregon State from Shreveport, Louisiana on the Beavers Sports Network. Well, I guess that's not really a great surprise, Jim, with, with the new quarterbacking situation. You've talked in depth about the Wilhelm situation when Eric got hurt on the final play of the third quarter. And with Gonzalez seeing his first action of the year, Grambling not messing around. They're coming with the blitz, and it costs Oregon State two points in the safety here. It really does, and it reminds us of a time when Oregon State had to use, I think it was a freshman punter somewhere along the line. And the first time he went in to kick, the other team rushed him. And you could just expect it to happen, especially with a team that's as quick and as mobile as Grambling, and they got to him. And that freshman punter was Chip Stempeck of Tucson, Arizona. First time he kicked right. the ball to open the season. Arizona blocked it and wound up going for a touchdown, recovered in the end zone. All right, Pena will punt the ball from the 20-yard line, and here it is. Far side, he kicks it short of bounds at the 30, chased on at the 26-yard line, picked up there, returned back to the 30. Nice cut, 35, still going to the 40. Loose football. Beavers, I think, got it at the 42. On the return was Tommy Addison. And lost the football at Oregon State as recovered at the Grambling 42-yard line. And let's see who's down to the bottom of that stack. Two Beavers went flying for the football. And it's, no, it's not Brian Swanson. It is Mike Matthews again. Gee, has he played well on special teams for Oregon State this year. Matthews from Sunset. Picks it off. Matthews, didn't didn't he have an earlier fumble recovery in this game? Yeah, I think he did. Uh... Our statistician departed, but I think he did. Did he yes. go home? Yeah, I think he went home. <laughs> He's headed for the airport. Okay. It'll be Beaver Ball at the 42. We've got another official's time uh, timeout on the field because we have an injured player, but we're going to keep it right here. It'll be Beaver Football at the Grambling 42. And it's the, the safe. All right, the Beavers go back in the huddle now and see if we can manufacture something again with Rich Gonzalez. <laughs> 5.47 to go. It's getting down to cases now. The Beavers will not have that many possessions left, probably two at the most, this and maybe one more time with the football. So if they're going to get anything done, they're going to have to do it in a hurry. Wide receivers go right and left as the Beavers start at the Grambling 42. Montana to the left, buying them out to the right. Reggie's caught six tonight. Back to pass Gonzalez. Here comes the rush. Here's the bomb down the near sideline. Just overthrown at the five-yard line. Incomplete intended for Bynum. 
Boy, they let it hang out, and Gonzalez again throwing the bomb down the near side, and that was close. The first time he threw the bomb to Montana was way overthrown. This one was about, oh, maybe a yard at most beyond Reggie's reach. Maybe not even quite that far. Incomplete down the near sideline, second and ten. And uh, Reggie Bynum running well that time. We mentioned a few minutes ago that he appeared to be injured. In fact, he was, and he was down on the field, got up and limped off. But that time he showed no sign of any injury. As he covered a lot of ground, he comes out this time, goes to the far side, and I don't think he's got any problems physically. We'll update some West scores for you in just a moment. Second down and ten, Oregon State. Here's Gonzalez straight back to pass. Has time initially, throws over the middle to Heller. Got it at the 40, runs laterally across the 36-yard line, and is down at the 36 in the arms of James Harris, that fine linebacker who captured Gonzalez for the safety earlier. Good gain of six, and it'll be third down and four at the 36. Okay, updating in the West. Utah, this is in the third quarter. Utah 38, UTEP 2. Halftime, San Diego State 21, Colorado State 10. Halftime, Boise State 30, Montana State 14. Halftime, Air Force 28, New Mexico 6. All of the scores on our postgame show. Following tonight's broadcast, second down and four Beavers at the 36 of Grambling near side hash mark. And back comes Gonzalez to pass. Five go to the pattern. Gonzalez now hit in the backfield, spins loose, now winds up and guns the ball. Incomplete right through Robert Goins' hands at the 15. And he looks at his hands in disbelief that he dropped the football. Gonzalez, first of all, did a very good scrambling effort to get away from the rush. And then really... To tell it like it is, forced the ball into coverage, Jim, and threw it right to Goins, who dropped it. He just wanted to get rid of it. He was about to go down himself. You have to wonder about Rich. If Wilhelm cannot play next week and we go to Los Angeles, with Rich, the quarterback, he is from Diamond Bar, which, if memory serves me correctly, is east of Los Angeles. I think he might be a little nervous to go and play the Coliseum against the Trojans. Yeah, starting tomorrow, probably. That's Sunday, right. right? <clears throat> All right, here, it's down to this now. Fourth down and four at the Grambling 36-yard line. And back to pass Gonzalez, looking towards Bynum, throwing over the middle to hell of the tight end. 35, got it, trudge ahead to the 30 to first down. And the Beavers keep the drive going. That's been by, and here's another flag back in the backfield. And this is, yep, you know it and I know it, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, holding. It, again, a number of holding penalties. They pointed that time at the center, Jack Lester. So the first down will be nullified. I was about to say the Beavers' best passing play of the night has been to the tight end. Keller, either on that little flip over the middle or the screen to one side of the field or another. And they've gotten a lot of yardage out of it. But also about three of Heller's catches have come back via penalties tonight. This brings it back to the 45 and now puts the Beavers in. I'll mark it at the 46. Puts the Beavers into a fourth and 14 situation. Wind up the clock. 440 to go. Fourth down. Ross in at tight end. Back to pass Gonzalez. Here comes the rush. They get him for a sack back at the 45-yard line in Grambling territory, and that'll probably be the ball game. Let's go to a timeout. Timeout of the field. Score. Grambling 16, Oregon State 6. Give the ball on a little reverse to Sherman Cowley, and he is hit and tackled for a loss back at the 48-yard line by Haggerty and Curitan. Cowley, young man, Benson High School in Portland. Second down. Here comes the same play now to the other side of the field, and this is going to go for a loss as Cowley is wrapped up, or I'm sorry, this is McFarlane, the wingback on the carry, and he's hit down for a loss back at his own 49. Levance Northington with the tackle. Osei Lewis helps out. Good defense in the second consecutive play, and Grambling will have third and 16 now backed up to their own 49-yard line. 
Beavers were moving the ball and really showing some signs of getting right back in the football game, but got the crippling blow on the final play of the third quarter when they lost their quarterback, Eric Wilhelm, to injury. Grambling has since tacked on a safety and lead by 10. Here's the bomb from Landry deep, and it's going to be almost out of the stadium, way over everybody's head on the far side of the field, throwing to Thomas, the wingback, on a deep uh, fly pattern down the far side of the 15. Northington with good coverage for Oregon State. It's fourth down, and Grambling will have to punt. And on what has kind of been a dismal night in, in the south, the one positive for the Beavers has been the play of their defense. They played strongly on defense tonight. Yielded only 16, technically 14, with the two coming on a safe safety off the offense. Here's Williams to punt. They come with a rush. They do not get there. Good punt. Far side will bounce at the 10. It comes backward at the 12. So rather than sailing to the end zone, the Beavers will be backed up at their own 12-yard line. Fine, fine kick by Robert Williams. Adams let it sail over his head, thinking it would probably wind up end zone, but it kicked back to the 12-yard line, and the Beavers will have to start from there, first down and 10. This reminds you of the Dave Cragthorpe television show on the air tomorrow night, 11 p.m. each and every Sunday night on the Public Broadcasting Network in the state, Channel 10 in Portland, Channel 7 Corvallis, Channel 13 LeGrand, and Channel 3 in Bend. Beavers at USC next week with our airtime at 1 Two weeks from today, the next home game at Parker against Washington State. And that'll be a wild one with the way the Cougars are scoring points and giving up points. Here's Gonzalez to pass. Big rush on, throws outside, and ho is a receiver deck. The pass is incomplete at the 16. Or no, they say it was caught in the air. No, that can't be. The ball bounced. Here comes another official to overrule. The ball bounced, but the pass was intended out of the <laughs> Beaver. Coaches are just besides themselves on the far side. An official followed that ball. And are they going to rule this? No, they can't possibly rule touchdown. Grambling players are coming to the sidelines. They can't possibly rule this a touchdown. The ball was thrown out to the flat. No, it's going to be incomplete. It bounced. And no, he, and they're going to rule that it's a fumble. Is what they're going to do. Uh oh, that's impossible. Yeah. They rule it's yep, a they're going to give Grambling the football to the 16 and rule it's a fumble by Bynum. That's a horrendously bad call. Bynum got hung up in the air as Gonzalez threw the ball late and high. Bynum just barely made contact with the football when he was just taken apart by a Grambling defensive back. The football came out immediately, <laughs> and they ruled it a fumble. 2:55 left to go. Where's the airplane when we need it? Handoff inside. Dyson running hard. Gets down to the 11-yard line on a counter between left guard and tackle. Lewis makes the hit at the 11. The gain is five. And it'll be second down and five yards to go. <laughs> Long way to travel to see this kind of officiating. 237 left to go. Unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, it really is. And I think we're generally pretty kind to the officials. If there's any doubt, we should certainly try not to jump that way and because it makes it sound like we're making excuses. But Grambling has been the better football team tonight, and they've had some help also, put it that way. Here's the handoff second man, Cowley, to the 10, drives ahead of the 8. Mingo grabs him around the ankles and throws him down there. Here comes a very late flag and maybe a, another penalty against Oregon State. At least Grambling thinks so with a couple of players jumping up and down. Beavers obviously have to be very frustrated now. That gain was to the eight. Here comes personal foul, Oregon State. This will take it down to the four, and it'll be first and goal with 2.12 left to go. Schneider maybe, Jim? I think it was. A late hit or something out there, and now he's going to come out of the football game. I don't, he's not being thrown out. He's just going to leave. But as you said, it's a very frustrating situation out here at the present time. Oregon State players really disappointed in the call by the officials on the what they called a fumble after a pass reception. In fact, they originally called it a touchdown, but that really wasn't what it was. That was a really great call when they called it a touchdown. And the official followed the ball carrier who picked the ball up and ran with it into the end zone. And, I mean, he didn't just, he watched him run all the way. Yeah, it's slightly illegal to advance the football that has bounced on the on the ground. Here's first down. Cowley in the backfield, hit at the 10, spins off of the 5, drives ahead. Lewis got him at the 4 and decks him. Johnson almost had him for a loss back at the 10, but let him go. Let him loose, couldn't bring him down. And Sherman Cowley from Benson High School in Portland 
gets it to the four, back to the initial line of scrimmage where it'll be second down and goal. Smith's Home Furnishing reminds you to kick off great savings at all Smith's Home Furnishing stores. Smith's throwing great values your way with complete home furnishings for every room of your home. Smith's Home Furnishings, great quality and great prices. We're down to a minute 30 left to go, 16 to 6 Grambling, knocking on the door here on second and goal at the four. Beavers will be 2-2 two and two after tonight. Landry to pass. Guns it out near side. Cowley's got it, and he has scored. And that's got to be a big thrill for him. Sherman Cowley, touchdown. Celebration is really on on the near sideline, and well it should be, as Grambling has put a touchdown up, 22-6, to six, with a point after coming, and stations will send it your way for an extra commercial availability right after we check out the point after touchdown. I wanted to congratulate the officials. They actually dropped the flag when that one was due. About half of the Grambling team went down the end zone and jumped on Sherman County. <laughs> That's illegal, of course. You can't do that. So they did actually drop a flag. It's going to be against, uh, against Grambling. It'll be uh, marched off on the kickoff. All right, Ashir Nobahar will try the point after from the 10-yard line out of the hold of Patrick Scott. 22-6 with the PAT coming up. Grambling will be 3-0 following tonight's game. Oregon State will return home 2-2, and and the loss will not be the biggest factor of the night. It'll be the extent of the injury to quarterback Eric Wilhelm. Flags fly. We had movement up on the line of scrimmage before the snap. Eddie Robinson will get number 324, yes. which That's is right. a significant thing on this game. And then tomorrow, or next week, they go into Texas to play Prairie View at a big game. So for Eddie Robinson, a milestone tonight as he joins Bear Bryant. Very, very nice man, by the way, Eddie Robinson. Terrific guy to deal with. Very, very highly respected also. Yeah, he sure is. Coach for 43 years. Five-yard penalty, motion or movement offside will be the call to mark it back to the eight. So the PAT will come from the 15 now by Nobohar. 118 left to go in Shreveport, 22-6 with the PAT coming up. Scott holds at the 15-yard line. Snap, down, and kicked. On the way and good. So let's turn it back to our stations with 118 to go. Score now from Shreveport is Grambling State University 23 and Oregon State 6. Touchdown pass goes from Landry to Sherman Cowley to make a 23 to 6 with the point after good by Adashir Nubahar. Kickoff from the 25 yard line following the mark off of a 15 yard penalty. Bounce into the near side, taken at the 10, returned out to the 15, 20 yard line. Hawkins still alive, 25 30 on the sideline, 35. Great return all the way to the 38. Reggie Hawkins for Oregon State to his own 38. And the Beavers will go on offense for the last time in this football game now. First and 10 of their own 38. A minute 11 left to go. Rich Gonzalez, the quarterback. Oregon State Athletics would like to thank G.I. Joe's for their sponsorship of OSU Radio Broadcast. And for you Portland area listeners, you'll be happy to know that G.I. Joe's has opened their new Tualatin store off I-5 at the Durham exit. Have a time. Well, we have a flag down. I didn't see the penalty flag, and uh, here comes a mark off against Oregon State for unsportsmanlike conduct. You know, you get the idea. We better get this ball game over with in a hurry because tempers are short to say the least. Now, with a minute 11 left to go, 
23-6 Grambling. <laughs> well, we can co congratulate. It's not been a great day for the state of Oregon, with one exception, and we'll pass along congratulations to Don Reed and his Portland State Vikings, who won a very important game for them today on the road. They played their fourth Big Sky opponent in a row and won at Montana with the wishbone attack and all that Montana's running, 21-16. to 16. Way to go, Don, and way to go, Vikings. Darrell, I think we'd better wait a few days before we ask the Oregon State coaches about what the officiating tonight. What do you think of the officiating? Yes. I don't think I'll lead off of that on the I Dave Cragthorpe show don't Tuesday think night. I, would. <laughs> I don't think I would. Mild-mannered Dave might not be so mild-mannered. Yeah. Adams to the right and Bynum out to the left of the formation for Gonzalez, the quarterback. From the 22, they give the ball to Lane. We're sweeped to the left. 25 ahead, 30. Breaks, tackles, 35, and all the way to the 40 in a great run. 18-yarder. That was very well blocked. It was first and about uh, two miles to go. The gain is out to the 40. The Beavers will stop the clock, call a timeout here, and it'll bring up second down at eight with 52 seconds left to go in the football game. Really surprised at the attendance figure, unless they let a lot of folks in free tonight. The, they list the attendance 13,396. Boy, I would have certainly thought it was at least 20,000. Yeah, the stadium holds 51. It looks yeah. like there's more than 13 in it. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. Don't, I'm like you. I don't know. Of course, maybe a lot of these guys are grambling recruits, and they don't have yeah. to pay to get in. That's you right. Know? <laughs> Who knows? Might be kind of like Days of the Wiffle, too, that's, World Football League. When that's you right. Go downtown and pass out tickets. <laughs> that's right. Say, come to the game, folks. Beavers called the timeout to stop the clock with 45 seconds remaining, trailing 23 to 6. We'll have it second down and seven at the 41. Now, remember, Beaver Huddles next week. Monday noon, Corvallis at Nendells. Wednesday noon, Salem at the Other Place Restaurant on Mission Street. And Thursday noon, Portland at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Beavers are back to Pac-10 play from now on, starting next weekend, when they meet the Trojans of USC at Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles. Two weeks from today, it's the Cougars and the Beavers. Hope you get your tickets now for that. The toll-free number in state of Oregon is 1-800-GO-BEAVES and the ticket number at Gill Coliseum in Corvallis is 754-4455. That'll be a wild, wild football game. I hope you'll get to see it two weeks from today, 1.30 kickoff at Parker Stadium. Gonzalez to throw. Outside incomplete to Phil Ross. Flying up from the secondary was Jeffrey Smith trying for the intercept. He got there too late. Was well underthrown, and Ross gets up limping a little bit, but he's all right now. Runs back to the huddle, and it'll be third down. Third and eight, ball just across the 40-yard line with 41 seconds left to play in the football game. Grambling folks will obviously go home happy. Coach Eddie Robinson will have tied the record set by Coach Bear Bryant. Then next week, Grambling plays Prairie View at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Third down, nose of the ball just across the 40. Gonzalez straight back to pass, four rush for Grambling. Now they rush him out of the pocket. Now he's in big trouble. Now he throws incomplete. Just kind of dumped the ball ahead. Lester falls on it to me just to make sure that the officials don't rule that it was a fumble. But it's a, his arm was coming forward. It'll be an incomplete forward pass. And it will be fourth down. You know, the one thing that will help Gonzalez, and, and I hope this is not the case. I hope Eric's back next week. Eric Wilhelm I'm referring to. But if Gonzalez is the quarterback, at least now next week they'll devote all the time to him at quarterback. Jim, and that, that'll help to some degree. Yeah, I'm sure they will, and we'll see some changes in the offense. I'm sure they'll narrow it down considerably and go with those things I think he can execute, and uh, hopefully it'll help him a great deal as they get ready to go in against the Trojans. All right, fourth down. They give on a draw to below with a big hole. 40, 45, and he cracks for a first down out to the 40. What I think is a first down out to the 48. Good, hard running again. Both running backs, Malone and Lane, have run hard tonight. All right, Beavers keep possession with the first down out to their own 48. Montana brings the play in from the bench. We're down to 25 seconds left to go. Now they'll wind up the clock again as the Beavers break the huddle, and the clock starts. 22, 21, 20 seconds, counting down. 23 to 6, the score grambling. Here's Gonzalez to throw in the pocket. Big rush. Now winds up. Guns outside incomplete. Threw wildly past Montana. No, it's not Montana. It's Roman Fortin in a tight end for the first time, I think, this season from Ventura, California. 219-pound freshman running laterally along the 50-yard line left to right and overshot him incomplete. And that takes us to 11 seconds left to go. 
Second down. And it's taking a long time to finish up this football game. A lot of the crowd, however, they've already finished. They've departed or they are in the process of departing with Grambling leading by a score of 23-6. to six. So the Independent Stadium in Shreveport, very kind to the Tigers again. They'll now be 6-1 and one in like the last five years playing here. Stay with us on our postgame show. We'll update you on all those other scores. Here's Gonzalez back to pass. Maybe the last play. Flips it out to Lane on the sideline. Go to the 50 and out of bounds to stop the clock at the Grambling 48-yard line. That'll kill the clock with five seconds left so the Beavers can run one more play. Both defenses played very well tonight, particularly Grambling's defense, obviously holding Oregon State to six points. And that is something that it's very difficult for me to believe that the Beavers could not get a touchdown against Grambling tonight. But their defensive front four played very well. I think their secondary probably played better, too, Jim, than Oregon State coaches thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're correct on that. I think they've got probably better speed out there than Oregon State thought they had, and they've done a real good job covering on the passes. Here's the last play of the game as Gonzalez rolls out to the right, guns it downfield. It'll be intercepted at the 32. And that'll do it for the end of the game, the interception by Joseph Williams, the linebacker. The end of the game from Shreveport, Louisiana, with a final score. The Grambling State University Tigers, 23, and the Beavers of Oregon State University, 6.